welcomes you aboard for College Football Live 1984, a doubleheader beginning here with Brigham Young in Pittsburgh. And there from our Goodyear blimp, we can see the beautiful Pitt Stadium, 40,000, 73 degrees. Winds only about 5 to 10 miles an hour and should not get, be much of a factor in the ball game. We're hoping the rain doesn't come. There's a little bit of an overcast here at Pittsburgh right now and a chance of showers. There's Lavelle Edwards, 12 seasons, 105 ball games, never coached anywhere else, and what a job he's done. He loves it out in Provo, and his uh, counterpart is Serafino Dante Fazio, better known as Foge, comes from a childhood word that meant fudge. And he has replaced the long line of championship coaches here, and started with majors, went on to Cheryl, and now Foge Fazio has found his role. Here's Lee Johnson, one of the great kickers in America. Would have won the punting championship last year had he had enough. He'll kick off and back deep is Dante Wiley for Pittsburgh at the goal line. Remember the new rule this year, if you kick it beyond the end zone, the ball comes out to the 30, not the 20. This guy has to let up a little bit. We're on the way, high and over and kick. Back in the end zone is Wiley. About four yards deep, going to run it out. Not a very good decision. Stopped at the 14-yard line by an aroused team by Brigham Young and Pittsburgh. Now we'll take over. And in will come John Conjemi. They call him ace. He replaced the great All-American Marino here a couple of years ago. He's a very smart, standing player for the Panthers. He'll have in the backfield with him Chuck Scales, number 22, a tailback. There's Conjemi. Fullback is Mark Bailey, number 21. Wide receivers are Bill Wallace, a great one, at the split end, and Jeff Casper, number 88. Casper's out to the left side and Wallace to the right. First play of the ball game for Kajimi. Kajimi to the sidelines. He's got him man over the other tight end. It is Bill Wallace who grabs the ball up around the 25 yard line and it's a first down for Pitt. Defensively for Brigham Young, they play a three-man line with Larry Hamilton, Jim Herman, the tackles, Brad Smith, the guard, they weigh 232, 262, and 243. Linebackers are Leon White, number 41, a great one, Kerry Whittington, Marv Allen, and Kurt Govea. And the deep backs are Jeff Sproul, Steve Heyman, Kyle Morrell, outstanding athlete, and Mark Allen. Another first down play for Pitt. And Jimmy gets to his tailback, scales to the right side, not much. Matt over there, number 41, Leon White, is the linebacker who got him. He was an All-American candidate, 87 tackles a year ago. He's a good football player, Jim, and BYU is pretty, uh, pretty much conventional on defense. They'll stay in that odd front. Once in a while, they'll kick it down a little bit, but you won't see him stun a lot. Interesting, on that first play, can Jimmy comes out throwing the football. I don't think you'll see a belt or suspenders on either one of these teams today. They're going to let it all hang out. Pick up of a couple, second down and eight at about the 27-yard line of Pittsburgh. Pitt looking for a 12th straight winning season for the Panthers. And Jimmy takes the pass, gives it up the middle of the fullback, Bailey, and a little bit of a draw, and he gets two or maybe three yards. And then he slammed down the third. It's going to bring up a, th a, a third and at least five to go. And it'll be a key call for Congeny. Well, that's a good effort by the BYU defense. They swarm to the football pretty good. You know, for years, people have talked about the BYU offense and what is very, very much mistaken is the job that they do on defense at the Y. This is probably the best defensive team I've seen Lavelle Edwards have. And Jimmy sets Wallace, his key receiver, the top of your screen to the right, and he splits Casper way out to the left side. BYU looking for a pass on third down and five at the 31. And Jimmy's going to have to look at dumps it off to the backfield man, Bailey, and he'll be stopped short of the first down. No gains, a matter of fact, to the neighborhood of the 30, and BYU covers up downfield. And Jimmy had no one open, and it'll be a punting situation for Pittsburgh. Steve Heyman did a great job. You know, here's a guy who's a walk-on, a pleasant surprise. Dick Felt, the uh, defensive back to coach, gave him an opportunity. What a job he's done. Potter in there now is Chris Jellick, a junior from Pittsburgh for the Panthers, and deep is Vi Sikahima for BYU. He'll kick it from about the 20-yard line. So it should be good field position off the side of his foot going to the right side. Takes a Pittsburgh bounce inside the 35 and rolling over the 30 and down to about the 27-yard, 25-yard line. That was a fortunate kick for Pittsburgh. BYU will be back in a hole. No score here in the first quarter from Pitt Stadium at Pittsburgh. As B 
Citywide Pit Game is brought to you by Jeep Corporation. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. And by Wheaties, big time crunch, big time treat. Wheaties, what the big boys eat. Brigham Young now gets the ball for the first time. Robbie Bosco comes on. He's trying to continue that long string of great quarterbacks. Nielsen, Wilson, McMahon, Young. Here's Bosco, a junior out of Provo, a hometown product, 6'2 188 pounds. This will be his first play of 1984. And a handoff. Going to be a halfback pass. Out of the backfield, they got a man down at Koslowski. Oh, the great catch inside the 40 of Pittsburgh. Blaine Fowler lined up at halfback. A trick play by the Brigham Young Cougars. Lavelle Edwards going right to his bag of tricks on the opening gun. How about that, Eric? Well, it's not bad. Hopefully, Kozlowski is not hurt. Here it is. Looks like a sweep. Fowler, who's the backup quarterback, sets up on that back foot, gets a lot of pressure. In fact, he gets crunched. Kozlowski, we talked about him in the pregame. Jim, this is the guy who is playing with a chip bone. He used to limp because he had an Achilles problem. Look at the catch he makes. And watch how you, the, you take that punishment when you throw a run. Pass. BYU comes out, and they've been doing this for years. Throw to football. Irv, no one, no one on the field, no one here in the booth saw Fowler in that backfield and a trick play, and Brigham Young immediately is in pit territory. And here's Bosco. Bosco in the pocket. Side arms it. Incomplete. Out of bounds to Kelly Smith around the 25-yard line. Well, they got a lot of pressure that time because uh, Pitt is used to playing that good defense, and Caesar Aldisart, part of the best linebacking duo in the East. The other one is Todd Benson, really put some heat on, but once again, BYU throwing the ball. Irv, don't you love Brigham Young? They don't come out to establish a running game, get things going. They come right out, they shoot, they throw the football. It's what they do best. Running is for cowards. That's what they say in Provo. They get out after it, and uh, Lavelle Edwards does not play to keep from losing. He plays to win. That's why a lot of coaches admire him. Second and ten of the Pitt, 40, uh, 37 yards line. Kozlowski in motion. Bosco looking left. Fires it over there. It's incomplete. Intended for Bellini. I think it was tipped by a charging lineman. It might have been Chris Dolman. The big defensive end for Pittsburgh. Got in. Got a fingertip on that ball by Bosco. So he's 0 for 2 after the long opening pass. That'll be third down and 10 as Lavelle Edwards. And there's Folds Fazio. You know, Bosco was very nervous at practice. It's understandable. Uh, here's a guy who really hasn't been under fire. He looked good last year. I saw a film on him against New Mexico when Steve Young had to leave for a while. But Bosco has got great ability and just needs to settle down. I guarantee he's going to get a lot of opportunities to throw the ball. BYU throws two out every three times. Well, here's a key play now. Brigham Young's going to keep things going. It is third and 10 at the Pittsburgh 30. Well, you didn't have to punt that much. Back in uh, safety, Dante Wiley waits for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And Johnson just hanging it up there, trying uh, for the coffin corner end zone, trying to get it bounced inside the five, and it goes on in for the back. So Pitt will come out to its own 20-yard line with no score in Pittsburgh between Pitt and BYU. Well, the golden triangle and the point of the Steel City, the Renaissance, too, they say, as Pittsburgh uh, becoming quite a town. As the Panthers here try to keep going, they won 11 straight seasons now, winning record. Now from the 20, handoff up the middle of Mark Bailey. Bailey hits off his own left tackle. That's Bill Fralick, and you can look for Pittsburgh to do a lot of running to the left side or the weak side. Let's take a look at the big guy, number 79, and how he moves folks out. Look at the arms on him, Jim. And he just gets into Herman. Once again, you're entitled to lock out a little bit this year. I'll tell you something about this Herman. Doesn't look like he does much. All they do is move the sticks. He follows his blocking better than anybody, in my opinion, Pitt has. Very underrated ball player. Pick up a five, second and five for Pitt. Got Jimmy, one, two wide outs to the right side. He's going, it's tipped over there. It's still caught by Wallace. Up over the 30-yard line and maybe a first down. Wallace is taken down immediately by Mark Allen, a corner linebacker. Jim, 
interesting because Allen uh, does an excellent job. Look how they get out on you. Once again, they're coached by Dick Felt. And Allen does an excellent job here as he is able to uh, keep the game very short. They do pick up the first. And Jimmy does his job and uh, pit uh, right on schedule with the first down. Second first down for the Panthers who open up the ball game with the first down. Then we're stopped by Brigham Young's defense. Kick. Brigham Young had the one big play but could do nothing more. And now here's Pittsburgh trying to get a drive started. First and ten. And it's on 31 with yeah. Jimmy Scales and Bailey in the backfield. Here's a draw play to uh, the tailback Scales. And he's got some running room around the left corner. He's in the BYU territory. And take it out around the 47 or 48 yard line. That's the biggest play by Pittsburgh so far. And it will scale, showing his bonehead speed. Well, once again, too, BYU has never been noted for their speed. Watch Scales as we pick him up right at the top. We isolate on him. He gets an excellent block from Casper downfield. Watch Scales run away from a tackle here. That's what speed will do for you. Scales has an opportunity to be an impact player for Pittsburgh. And I'll tell you something. Uh, his daddy, Charlie Scales, who played for Cleveland, played some with Foz Fazio. Nice looking young man there. Now Charlie Glavin has gone into the backfield. He's uh, fake up the middle, goes Bailey the fullback. Now Pittsburgh's going to rip holes on that Brigham Young line. They move it down inside the 40-yard line to be close to another first down for the Panthers. Boy, do they fire out of there. Petty John, Brown, Dixon. Dixon's a young guy. We've got a flag. We'll pick it up, Jimmy. Offensive holding, 10 yards. That's James Garvey, the referee giving Pittsburgh the bad news. That play is going to be called back. And Foge Fazio looks down a little bit of discontent. Well, let's take a look at Christie. I think this is the guy they nailed because he just makes the tackle, and that's illegal. He's on the other side of the line. Christie, one of the outstanding linemen here, and we pointed out the job that Solly Joe Moore does. Every lineman who graduates from here seems to go into pro ball. And they got some dandies up front. We mentioned Christy. Randy Dixon is a guy I like. He's just a young one. He, uh, he's projected as a, as a first rounder, and he's got a couple of years to go yet. 10 yard penalty puts the ball back to the Pittsburgh 43, and now it's first down and 20. Here comes Kanjemi, who's been a very exciting player. Eighth uh, all time passing in Pittsburgh's annals a year ago. Jimmy fires down the left side. Incomplete intended for Wallace. And he was tracked hard by Mark Allen just as the ball got there. Nice play by Mark Allen, the senior from Fullerton, California. A speed who runs the 400 meters and track. Look at this play. All right, here's the play that Allen makes. He's considered the weakest tackler of the four of Heyman, Morrell, and Sprouse. But he comes up, he puts a headgear in the back, and he's the one who forces the ball to be knocked loose. So that'll bring up second and long. Second and 20 at the pit 23. It's a good look at Allen, and he... Had he not made that hit, that would have been a caught pass for a good game. Gale set the slot this time. Now they get three men out down the right sideline. He goes and it is caught over there nicely by Jeff Casper. Casper running a sideline pattern, went deep, and took it right at the sideline. Single back setup, Jim. This is, uh, once again, Jimmy has only had the one incomplete pass, the last one we saw. Coming out, Casper's got the good speed. He gets a lot of pressure here, Jimmy does up the middle, completes the pass, and I'll tell you, right now, Jimmy is doing everything. Look at the hit he takes from Herman. He was able to run a little out uh, route here, or out move, I should say, and get to Jimmy, but uh, to no avail, third and short. Remember, they had the long penalty, so it's third down. They got about four yards to go from the Brigham Young 43 yard line. And Jimmy going to go back to the air. Comes over the left side, and it is caught. First down around the 32. Jeff Casper again, this time to the left side. And Pitt now is rolling here in the first quarter with no score. But as Casper's a good looking football player, and Jimmy has stayed with the out pattern. You'll see an out and go pretty quick. All right, here's our officials talking it over, so we've got some problems. Our referee is James. Garvey. Here it is. We've got illegal use of hands by the defense. The crowd. The chain stands. First down. Can Jimmy will take the pass. He is on a hot roll here. He's been mixing his receivers, Bill Wallace and Jeff Casper, and he's moved the football nicely downfield to the Brigham Young 32-yard line. It's now first and ten. Keep in mind the draw he mixed in with Scales. That really set things up. The only thing that stopped him has been that holding penalty. Scales set behind Bailey in the backfield, and they give it to the first guy, Bailey, and the big fullback finds a little bit of a crack over the right side. 
down to the 27. That'll be close to a five-yard game again for Pitt. Do they get a job out of that tight end? Tom Johnson, number 80, is 6'5", 275, has not caught a pass yet for Pittsburgh. And, of course, uh, here's a guy who was not supposed to, uh, to play much this year. Wilson was the man. He's hurt. Johnson can flat block 255, and he comes to play. Fralick, Tristy, Petty John, Brown, and Dixon across the interior line for Pittsburgh. Second down and five. They gained five yards from about every first down play. Here's the play action fake by Jimmy. Jimmy looking at the end zone. Now he's tripped up coming out of his backfield. Good coverage downfield deep by Brigham Young, especially by Jeff Sprouls and by Kyle Morrell. BYU is pretty much a zone team, and that's what they were in this time. They did an excellent job. Can Jimmy on the scramble looked like he had some room because the Cougars had lost their lanes, but uh, Kirk Gavea was able to trip him up. So to bring up third about four. Can Jimmy, who last year hit 57 percent of his passes, 16 touchdowns on over 1,900 yards, have an outstanding season in his sophomore year? Third down, about three and a half, and they give it to Scales, and I don't think he gets it. Scales looks like he stopped maybe a half yard short of the first down at the 23-yard line. Well, here's a chance for Fazio to make a decision. Is he going to make a go for it or going to go for the three? Look at the lead play. Once again, this is Heyman, the guy for everybody out there who doesn't have a scholarship this fall. Look at the hit here. This is a guy they felt obligated to give a chance to this fall and, and last spring, and Heyman does his job. Fourth and short, Jimmy. I go with a sneak here to take the middle linebacker out of it. Let's see what Coach Fazio decides. Well, Fazio's going to go for it. He's looking for some scoring to come sooner or later from Brigham Young. It is Bailey and Marlon McIntyre, both fullbacks in there in a power formation. They need about a half yard, that's all. That's a fullback sweep up to Jimmy, and I think he's got a good second effort down around the 21 and a half yard line. That'll be another first down, I'm sure, for Pitt, and the Panthers now are knocking at the door of the Cougars. That really is the play. If you run the sneak short yardage, it takes the middle linebacker like a Marv Allen or a Kerry Whittingham out of it. They do pick up the first. Back in Provo, Utah, over 6,000 students and many more fans are in the Marriott Center. And thanks to ESPN providing the coverage, they're listening and watching today's game. One of the rare visits east by Brigham Young. First time ever under Lavelle Edwards. First and 10, Pittsburgh at uh, the 21 and a half. And Jimmy looking for Casper. Goes in the end zone. There's Wallace down there. There's Brooklyn up. Incomplete pass. Wallace went for Coffin Corner. Had good position on his defensive man, but he made a great play on it to save the touchdown. Watch 34 Gavay as he gets in kind of Jimmy's face. You talk about taking a lick. He takes one right there. Pow. And there's the effort here as uh, the Pitt fans don't like it, but it's broken up pretty good. Mark Allen did a great job there. Well, he's just a good football player. Once again, they're well coached in that secondary. Allen, in the book on him, he's a weak tackler, but I'll tell you, he hasn't shown that at all. Five out of seven, 31 yards for Jimmy. Second and 10, the 21. Chance here for Pittsburgh. Brigham Young trying to dig in. They give it to full back, and Bailey's going to be stopped short of the 20. A yard at most as Brigham Young now is giving grudgingly in there. A wave of white shirts. Rode him down at the 20-yard line. It'll be pickup of a yard and third and nine. Talk about playing that contain. A guy we've talked about a bunch. Steve Heyman had the outside. And it looked like Bailey had something going. Nothing doing. Third down. Jimmy will probably put it up here. They do run an excellent draw in this situation. They don't look like they'll come out there. But I thought they'd go single back. That's not the case. Uh, Wallace to the left and Casper to the right. Passing situation here for Pittsburgh. Brigham Young loosening up in the secondary. Jimmy on a straight drop. Good protection. Drills it. It's intercepted. Pitt comes out. He's got the ball over the 20. Mark Allen up to the 25 to 30. First big 10 over the game. And down goes a penalty marker. Could be a clipping play. Let's wait and see. That's usually what happens on a run back like this. But Mark Allen has staved off the first Pittsburgh threat of the game. Second team all wax, 6'1", 174-pound senior. All he did is step in front, do his job. Jimmy set up, and he looked like he was in decent shape. This secondary has always played well under Dick Feld, one of the veteran coaches in the West. During the run back, we've got a clip on the offense. Well, that's what it was, clipping it on the run back by Brigham Young. But Pittsburgh, that was an impressive drive downfield that started back around the 20-yard line after the punt in the end zone by Johnson. And now they're halted on the first turnover of the game. A nifty interception by Mark Allen, who's married, has a young daughter, a 
and they're enjoying the game, I'm sure, back in Utah. The penalty takes the ball back to the 14. Brigham Young will start from there in the hole with no score in Pittsburgh. The Panthers have come up empty-handed after the first impressive drive thanks to the interception of Mark Allen of BYU who makes a nifty move on the play. We hope they'll be able to show it to in a minute, but here we go. BYU after the penalty back. It's 14, first and 10. Bosco is in. Bosco hands off up the middle. Fumble on the ball, and it's going to be kicked in the end zone. It'll be a Pittsburgh touchdown. Now, wait a minute. I think they're going to say the ball was down. They're going to say the ball was down, I believe. Bill Sapio was the man who knocked that ball loose for Pittsburgh. But the ball was down on the handoff. And so it'll be second and nine. A gain of a yard to the 15-yard line. That was a close call for BYU. Well, let's take a look. Not a very popular call here in Pittsburgh. Well, look at the surge of the Panther defensive line. They're supposed to have a lot of gaps. You can't tell if the ball is down or the knee is down, I should say. The official makes the call here. So BYU gets a life here. Still have not completed a pass from Bosco. Bosco, I should say, Fowler completed one there when he lined up at a halfback spot. Kelly Smith and McKay Hibuli, the running backs for Brigham Young. Here's Bosco, the out pattern is caught by the tight end, David Mills, over the 20. And he's trying to struggle for the first down to be stopped about a yard or so short by Bill Sapio, the defensive left end of Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at how BYU got the ball. Once again, Wallace is bread and butter. You go to him. This is how you play zone defense. Allen watching the quarterback's eyes all the way. Look at him move up because Conjemi had been on a roll. Wallace is waiting for the play. He feels will take him in. Instead, Allen with the interception, and BYU dodges a bullet. Well, it's third and short uh, for Lavelle Edwards. Fazio expecting a pass here. He's put a nickel back John Ducky Lewis and changed a couple of the uh, linebackers. So here we go. Third and two at the 23-yard line. A third and about a yard and a half if you want to be uh, tactical about it. Now we got a timeout by BU. By you. The score. Bigham Young nothing. Pittsburgh nothing. And we'll be back in a minute. Overhead in Pittsburgh, the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida. And our best wishes to the pilot, Richard Daniels from Burbank, California. Giving us some great shots. Coming later tonight on ESPN, the second part of a doubleheader. Miami, defending national champions, already with a big win over Auburn. Take on our tribal Florida Gators in a game at Tampa Stadium. Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire will be there for the action. So stay tuned throughout the day and evening at ESPN. Third, about a yard and a half, and it is a fake by Bosco. Bosco fires downfield, and it is broken up, almost intercepted. Trying to go down there, there was a running back by Sikahima, and it's broken up by Melvin Dean, and pretty nearly picked off by Chris Goldman. Goldman man, was the man putting on the pressure. Bad decision, Jim, by Bosco. He's off to a rough start, has not completed a pass yet. Boy, take a look at Air Force out of the same conference BYU is in, and they got the new coach, Forrest Fisher DeBerry, doing a good job. That's a whack game in the Western Athletic Conference. In the punt now, number 10, Lee Johnson. Dante Wiley's back. This guy can really hit him when he does. There's a driving spiral. Wiley backs up inside his 30 at the 29. He's got it, fumbles it, and that gives the BYU coverage time to get down there and stop him after a short run back. So Pitt will have it around their 36, first and 10. Listen to this rushing yardage. In the first quarter, Pittsburgh 41 yards, Brigham Young minus one. Well, coming your way is Auto Racing Doubleheader on Sunday, September 2nd at 1 o'clock live, the Southern 500 from Darlington International Raceway, and then at 5.30 p.m., the Escort Radar Warning 200. Join us. Jimmy Pitt has dominated thus far, but the only thing that matters is the scoreboard right now with 424 left in the quarter, no score. And Pittsburgh's come in with its heralded freshman, Craig Ironhead Hayward. He's in there with Marlon McIntyre, two fresh running backs for John Kinzimi. And they give it to Hayward coming the left side. He bangs over one man and then is halted short of the 38 by another for Brigham Young. But Craig Haywood, there's Govea who made the stop. The outside linebacker, a junior from Hawaii. But Hayward is one of the most touted incoming freshmen in college football this year. Foe just had two good recruiting years. Once again, they run off the weak side as good as anybody other than wishboat teams in the country. There he is, Ironhead. He gets that name because he's tough. Now they get it with Paul McIntyre and Big Mac turns up over the 40 and punches his way onto about the 42. Well, Pittsburgh now is trying to punch some holes, get BYU's defense to concentrate and open it up. Take a look at the left side. This is what they like to do. Looks like it's going
going to be an X block after Freilich leads instead. They uh, just drive out of there. With, uh, that's a pancake, as they call it. If you put them on the back, and number 73 going out and doing his job nicely for the uh, Panthers. Greg Christie is not a bad football player in his own right. Third and five for Pittsburgh. Could be a passing situation. Wallace to the left and Casper to the right. Here they come, Jim. Now well, they fake the blitz, and they're going to give it a draw play, and Haywood breaking tackles over the 50. There's the power of the big freshman from Passaic, New Jersey. They see he's potentially a 1,000-yard gainer, and he just showed us why he's one of the top running backs to come into college football this year. Well, ask Larry Hamilton. What 79 Hamilton tries to take on this big horse? Look at the thighs and legs right here. Hamilton, who uh, weighs about 240, has no luck. This young freshman, is, is he another Tony Dorsett? Well, I'll tell you what, that's speaking a, a lot of football player, but he looked pretty good there, didn't he? Uh, he looked more like Herschel Walker than me on that one. It is down to the BYU 42, first and 10. They pitch it again to Hayward. Iron head to the right side. They're waving this time, the Cougars are, and they close him off for no appreciable gain. The first guy to hit him, number 42, Steve Heyman, a strong safety from Salt Lake City. Also in there was Leon White. Excuse me, Jim, you mentioned Heyman. He has been sensational. In fact, the story of this ball game thus far for the Cougars has been Heyman and Allen. They've been all over the field making tackles. Loss of a yard on the plays. You get a good shot looking overhead. It's the Pitt Stadium. It was here that Jock Sutherland and Pop Warner won eight national championships about a half century ago. Second and 11 for Congeny. Congeny looking. Going the right side to Wallace at the sideline. Hooks up, takes it inside the 35. And he is bumped out of bounds over there. What should be a first down for Pittsburgh. Kyle Morrell. Brigham Young seems to be playing a little soft on Wallace, and it's cost them. Well, they're back nine yards rather than seven. Look at Clemson. There's a team that go in the national championship, and they open up impressively. Wallace is not a speed guy at all, Jim, but he's such a great possession receiver. People have compared him to Fred Bolitnikoff, and he's just had pretty much his run of the field today, with the exception of the interception that uh, uh, Allen had. Pat Chapani is coming out tight in. They give it again up the middle of McIntyre. A fullback on a slam. Just clobbers over defenders down to the 30, and he'll pick up four in the exchange. It'll be second down and six for Pittsburgh, and the Panthers are rolling again as they did earlier here in the first period, only to be halted inside the 20 by an interception. Well, there's a look at Foge Fazio, and right now his offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. They were doing the same thing on defense. And I'll tell you, when you got backs like McIntyre and Hayward in there giving scales and Bailey a blow, you're in very good shape. Foge played here under John. Michael Olson, 1960, was an architect of those great defensive here teams under Cheryl and Majors, and now he's taking over as head coach. Second down and five. Big flag, tailback, and there goes a holding flag, I would guess, as Craig Hayward tries the middle of the game. Got a pretty nifty game, and then the flag was thrown right in the line of scrimmage, and I would think it might be holding against Pitt. Let's listen here. The referee, James Garvey. Ten-yard holding. John Bradley is the umpire. He threw it at the feet of 72, Tony Brown. Uh, other officials, well, you mentioned James Garvey. John Bradley is the umpire. Howard Eckert, Lloyd McPeters, Jim Grabowski. That's a pretty good name. Not the same guy. Played at Green Bay. Bob Mantooth, John Joyce, and uh, Dan Martino. Mantooth and Bradley both uh, officiate in the USFL. And, you know, Jim, this is a pretty good deal because it's just like a lineman getting repetitions. The more you see plays, the better official you are. There are new rules this year. We might run over brief at least two of the principal ones. During the run, offense, second down. Ten-yard penalty on Pitt makes it now second down and uh, about 16 to go. Pass interference this year is no longer the spot of the foul. It's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage and automatic first down. And any kickoff that goes through the end zone is brought out not to the 20-yard line, but the 30. They're trying to encourage more runbacks and more action. Passing perhaps here for Congeny. He's got Casper right, Wallace to the left. And he fires a little screen pass off here, and it is grabbed by Scales, and he's down to the 35-yard line. So he sent both wide receivers deep dead to Jimmy and then dumped off a little delayed screen. That doesn't work too well, but it picks up about five. But 76, the nose guard Smith, that's his job to play for draws and screens. There he is right there. Now he's going to come over and get into the play as BYU runs to the football very well. Here comes 76. Keep in mind, he was putting pressure on. That's a good effort as they hold it to a short game. Brad Smith has really blossomed at nose.
Coast Guard for Brigham Young, came out of Rick's uh, Junior College as a second team All-American. Third down and ten now, the penalties have hurt Pittsburgh, and jimmy has got to produce with a big play. Jimmy fires over the middle, and it is caught down there by tight end Dexter Edmonds inside the 30-yard line, but it will not be a first down, but it could get picked down there for a field goal try. They spot it on the 26, it'll be fourth and two. Jim, they did a very good job that time spreading the defense, coming out in a pro slot. Foge has a decision here now, fourth and short. Well, that also ends the first quarter with the score. Pittsburgh nothing and Brigham Young nothing. Well, there are a few excitements around that'll match college football, and you'll see plenty of it this year on ESPN, your source for sports, as we bring you live action and top flight action throughout the season. Coming up later tonight, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire from Tampa, Florida, with the University of Miami Hurricanes and the Florida Gators. A little, far, a little far to sneak here. Let's see if they go to the fullback, Jimmy. Fourth and about uh, two from Jimmy. And Jimmy going to give it to his fullback, and it'll be close. Boy, that was Bailey hitting to the right side. They did not go behind Fralick. That might have surprised Brigham Young a little bit, but they gamble for the first down on fourth and about one and a half. I don't think they get it. Once again, 42 Heyman is uh, in there just causing some problems. Here's the lead block in here as they uh, get Wallace in there, and we'll have to wait. They'll measure it, but I tell you, all you do in short yardage defense, you get your hogs down, they submarine through, and you try and clean it up up high, and the corners have done a great job. In this case, Heyman was lined up there. Too close to call, Irv. If you had to guess, you'd say they didn't make it by an inch or two, but let's see. Very, very close. Well, you can see the reaction of Foge, Fazio, and the Brigham Young players. Brigham Young holds. First, an interception stopped Pittsburgh in the first quarter, and now a great uh, line stand here defensively at the 24-yard line stops the Panthers again. About 40,000 here in Pitt Stadium today to see this opening game of 1984. Interesting quarter. BYU only had the ball about six plays. Bosco hadn't hit on one yet. The BYU running game hadn't just been able to click. Fowler hit a pass to Kozlowski. Other than that, it's been BYU on the field with their defensive unit the entire 15-minute period. Well, that's something that can wear you down, Irv, as you go along as uh, BYU is going to have to start getting some first downs. Just to rest his defense, if nothing else. Hamuli and Smith split here, and here's Bosco on the drop play to Hamuli. Running room for the big Hawaiian, 35-yard line. That's the best running play by far for Brigham Young. Bill Callahan had to make the stop from free safety as Hamuli, who's the one running hope for this young backfield for Brigham Young, gets some room. All right, watch Garrick Matic and Ane up front as they do a good job. This is the bread and butter play, as you mentioned. This guy could be an excellent back. Hamuli picks him up and lays him down. Once again, look at the thighs on this guy. Let me correct something I said. Bosco hit, a, hit one of his passes to Bill, so he has the one completion. Nice play by the Cougars here. Bosco actually hit the first pass he threw, which was to his fellow quarterback, Blaine Fowler. He was able to throw him behind the last scrimmage. First down play. Bosco on a straight drop. Over the middle. And he's got a man in there. Caught it short. Sapio made the stop. Looked like out of the backfield was Sikahima. By Sikahima. Another Polynesian. Born in Tonga now for Mesa, Arizona. There's the first period. Dominated by Pittsburgh. Look at the total yardage. 143 to 46. A lot of that in rushing. But look how they... Had the ball in possession time, 12.51 to 2.09. That's going to be wearing and tearing on the pretty Brigham Young defensive unit. Pick up of six on that play, second and four. Brigham Young trying to get something going. Pittsburgh offsides on the play. They run the draw again up the middle, and Hamuli is stopped, but the flag is down. Looked like Walter Johnson jumped the gun from middle guard for Pitt. They went on two instead of one. Outside. Defense. That'll be a five-yard penalty against uh, Fazio's Panthers. Let's take a look at Walter Johnson. This is not the pitcher, Jim. This is the uh, middle guard right here. They did have a little stunt going. He's going to a gap, and intelligently, the center for the Cougars snapped the ball. Remember when Mike Pyle for the Bears used to do that every time? That's and some name, though. Walter Johnson had the yeah. big train. Here we got another Mike Pyle out here and Trevor Maddich. He's a good player. BYU uh, offensive line is very experienced. They're getting all they want today. This is a good defense for Pittsburgh, even though it's young. Johnson comes out. Bob Palmieri goes in out nose 
yard. That picked up a first down for Brigham Young, now in pit territory. Bosco with good uh, time in the pocket. Bosco fires, got a man over, tight in Mills, got it on the 40. Fumbles the ball out of bounds. It'll be another first down for Brigham Young. I'll tell you what, Jim, that one I think will come back because BYU is holding, and the guy they're holding was putting on a tremendous rush. And we're talking about Chris Dolman. Let's see if they pick up the same thing I see. They do have it. Dolman was putting tremendous pressure on, and one of the running backs didn't get a number, picked it up, and uh, this man saw the same thing, too. Well, coaches hate to see penalties like this, but uh, you expect it with some inexperience, especially the first ball game of the year, and an important one at that. Tension's running very high. Here's referee James Garner. Offensive holding during the pass. 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. You know, Lavelle Edwards pointed out and uh, right at the top, and there's a look at the guy we're talking about, that one of the big problems that they have is their backs must block. They must pick up schemes. They do not settle for the hot route if it looks like a stunt's coming. They, they uh, intend to go through their route, and it's very difficult to put young people in. Their tailbacks up until today had never run a snap from, uh, from center in the regular game, to the best of my knowledge. Both wide receivers to the right now for Bosco. And the draw play, Hamuli. Hamuli gets a little bit of an opening that it is slammed uh, to by Troy Benson. A great uh, strong side linebacker for Pittsburgh. An All-American candidate, and he showed you why there as you smelled at that play. Well, pound for pound, I'm not so sure that Benson and Alderson are not the best linebackers in the East. Normally, that's up the road at Penn State where you talk about great linebackers, but if they're two better than these two as a tandem, I want to see if they can play. Pittsburgh defense, a great tradition is continuing here. They always play reckless, gambling. Fazio was a defensive specialist himself, and now he's got Bob Junko as his coordinator. Second down and long yardage. 20 to go. Up the middle. And it is caught by Haysburg, the speedster, over the 45. Bill Callahan really put a shoulder to him. The gritty little Haysburg, who's a senior from San Mateo, California. There he is, number one, held the ball. Watch the interior, how they pick up this in tackle twister. Boy, did they do a job keeping it inside. Maddox with a great job. Haysburg is little, comes in. You have to do this if you play for BYU. You must go across the middle and sacrifice your body. Here's Benson. He had four interceptions last year. We watched the highlight film of him, and he gets a bunch. Can't uh, pull it off this time. Cougars right on schedule. Third and uh, well, about six or seven after that penalty uh, exploded. 14-yard pickup on the play. And then covering Kozlowski. Here goes Bosco. Bosco now with running room. Trying to get the first down. Goes for the sideline. He's got the first down and out of bounds around the 37-yard line. You know the guy we were talking about a moment ago, Haysburg, he did the best job of blocking that time to permit Bosco to pick up the first down. Uh, uh, Bosco is three for seven now. He's starting to loosen up. Keep in mind, this guy ahead of schedule in the quarterback derby when you're comparing him with a guy like Mark Wilson, who they like to compare him with in Provo. Well, I'll start 1973 and 74 with Gary Scheid, and then came Gifford Nielsen, number four in the country. Mark Wilson followed that, third in total offense. Then came McMahon. He wound up with 71 NCAA records. And then, of course, Steve Young, the $40 million man last year. And now Bosco trying to pick it up. First and ten. Deep drop. Bosco. Bosco again with running room. Bosco 30. He's going to get a sizable game out around the 23 for about a nine-yard pickup. Okay, what's happening, Jim? Pittsburgh is losing their passing lanes, and old momentum has shifted because BYU made some simple adjustments. Take a look. Here's Bosco. You know, people don't think he can run. Well, compared to Steve Young, he can't, but he still goes 4-7. Look, there's nobody there. They lose their lanes. Here's Robbie. Goes downfield, intelligently gets out of bounds. You don't try and run over anybody anymore unless you're Steve Young, and, and Steve will learn, too. <laughs> Well, the thing is, Steve Young was a great runner last year. The book on Bosco was strong arm, uh, great technique in passing, but not the runner that Young was. Well, maybe not, but he's picking up more yardage here for Brigham Young than any other rusher. First and ten it is at the Pittsburgh 23, and this is Brigham Young's only threat of the game thus far. No score. Brigham Young wants another timeout. Second one they've called here in this half. And with 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half, no score between Brigham Young and Pittsburgh. Brigham Young. Today's game, Brigham Young at Pittsburgh, is brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. A change in momentum here at Pittsburgh. The Panthers dominated the first quarter, but did not score. Now Brigham Young has come to life. And what has caused all this, sir, Brent? Well, I really think the first play they called at the other end, Hamuli on the draw. That's a play that you must make work if you're Lavelle Edwards. And Bosco has relaxed. Plus, uh, that offensive line has picked him up now. Hayes down the left. Kozlowski's up to the right. 
Bosco's been picking up a lot of yardage on him. Salonor's fullback. Here's he drills it. Caught down here by Hayes, but out of bounds around the 15 yard line. Close to another first down. It'll be about an eight yard gain. Melvin Dean there to make the stop. But now Bosco looking like he has a great deal more poise than he did in the first quarter. Play at the line of scrimmage this time. He audibilizes. Look at him pick about. Once again, BYU asks receivers and the quarterback to change in midstream. In other words, you read that defensive back. Melvin Dean is possibly the strongest man. All right, let's take a look at the strength of the center as uh, the Cougars continue to do a good job up front. Maddich is fifth. Passing situation for Cougars. Hayes goes out for that play. Is right back in there with Kozlowski. Kozlowski in motion, both up to the left. Bosco, Bosco fires it for the end zone. There's Kozlowski, touchdown. No, he's out of bounds. He is out of bounds. He did not get a foot down. Oh, what a tough break for Brigham Young because Kozlowski was there but did not know how to play. He's, he's protesting, but uh, we're going to see it right here. We got him ISO. This is one of the great pick plays in college football. Here's Kozlowski in motion. He'll pick off the safety. Boy, I'll tell you what. Look at this. And then he'll come out here. There's Kozlowski. There's a mix-up. They actually pick each other off. Let's check his feet now. Right down on the line, I believe, Irv. And he, uh, well, I'll tell you, it's a good call. He is definitely out of bounds. So give credit to the officials. They get a lot of heat, those stripes. Field goal attempt with Johnson. All right, now to try for the three points. Lee Johnson, 13 for 23 a year ago, has great range. Soccer style kicker will be a try of about 37 yards. There's the kick. Plenty long enough. And it is good. And Brigham Young has broken on top of the first score of the ball game with 10-15 to go in the first half. Brigham Young, three. Pittsburgh, nothing. Coming up later, the Chevrolet College Football Report. And then it's on to Tampa, Florida for Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire, and the Miami-Florida game. That's the University of Florida against the University of Miami. All here, we're happy to have you on ESPN for live college football association action. Now a three deep back here for Pittsburgh. The man in the middle is going to be Dante Wiley. He's a freshman from Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Has tremendous speed. There's Johnson, who has the first point of the ball game. Brigham Young leads 3-0. Pittsburgh's the favorite in this game, ranked high as third in the national polls this week. And Wiley waits. Here's the kick by Johnson. High headed for the end zone. And it does not carry through. It goes in the end zone for a touchback. Will come out to the 20-yard line. The new rule is it must go beyond the end line. And Johnson has perfected that kickoff to carry into the end zone. He used to boom him right out of the stadium. Let's take a look at the scoring drive, Jim. And, uh, boy, I tell you, the Cougars used up four minutes and 41 uh, seconds. The key play of the ball game thus far was the draw to Hamuli that got him going. BYU very upset with themselves. They had a cinch touchdown. The safety and corner ran into each other. Kozlowski unable to keep his feet in bounds. They settled for three. Johnson could have kicked a 60-yarder as far as that one went. Tom Brown now to the pit fullback, a sophomore from Laura Burrell, Pennsylvania. And here's Jenny. Jenny going deep down the sidelines for Wallace, and it is over his head incomplete. Boy, Wallace did a little hookup and then took off on a fly pattern, and he had beaten his man down there, Jeff Sprouse, but the ball was thrown a little bit too long. Boy, did they give Kajemi time to throw the football. Give credit to Freilich, Dixon, and Christie, Pettijohn, and Bob Brown. They did an excellent job. Kajemi showed you he has a little bit of an arm there. Well, if that had been Casper instead of Wallace, it would probably been six. Here's a score now in the third quarter, second quarter. Air Force 24, San Diego State nothing. That's a Western Athletic Conference game. You got a good-looking wishbone, the cadets. Second and ten for Pittsburgh. And Jenny, back on the drive, plays tailback scale. Breaks one time. Rather, it is Gladman, the freshman Charles Gladman from Akron. He's a parade All-American in the backfield a year ago, and here he is joining these other highly talented freshmen, Craig Hayward, Anthony Brown for Pittsburgh. Now let's take a look at Freilich. Gavea will actually make the first contact right here. He's the guy who's able to get inside Freilich that time, and occasionally even a Heisman Trophy candidate is not going to be able to handle his man. Gavea has been a big factor early in this ballgame, so it'll bring up third and long. No appreciable gain at all. As a matter of fact, it's third and ten. To the left side goes Casper, and the sure-handed Wallace is a short 
flag it to the right side. And Jimmy runs the draw again, and dusting through that comes the fullback Brown. Gets over the 20-yard line, and that's about it. Well, I'll tell you what, BYU kicked their defense down to a four-man front. They did a good job, particularly Kenneth Smith, number 65, and the Panthers will have to punt it away. The momentum has turned completely around with 9.09 left in the second period. Now backing up is Vaisikahima for uh, BYU. In the punt is Chris Jellick, a junior from Pittsburgh, a quarterback. He was uh, highly touted at the one time of that position. Now here's the kick away. Nice spiral. Sikahina's going to have to give ground. Takes it back, pilling at the 30. Oh, look at the blue shirts down there. Sikahina's no chance. Buried inside the 30-yard line. A fine punt coverage by Pittsburgh. It's BYU 3. Pittsburgh nothing. Back in a minute. Here at Pitt Stadium for this opening game, 1984, Brigham Young, the underdog, leading Pitt by 3-0, and we're midway here in the second quarter. Offensive line's done a great job protecting in recent plays for Bobby, Robbie Bosco. First down play, Bosco runs the draw play. Here comes Hick, uh, Hemuli, and he's not going to get much this time. Hemuli met by Caesar Halderser, who really crunched him at the 30-yard line. We haven't mentioned much about the Brigham Young line. The tackles are Dave White, 200. 67-pound junior from Petaluma, California, and Louis Wong, a 260-pound Hawaiian at 6'4". The guards, Craig Garrett, maybe one of the greatest that ever played at Brigham Young, has had about seven knee operations. He's 260, a senior, and 255-pound Robert Kanai, a senior out of Hawaii, is the right guard. Trevor Maddox, the next man, he's at center. They've done a great job protecting him. Here they are again. Bosco, sideline thrown wide, incomplete. Got a late flag face mask, and I think it's on BYU. Let's see if this is the call. Penalty flag down. He tried to hit Smith out of the backfield. A little uh, sideline pattern did Bosco. Hold. Holding. Brigham. Offense. Pittsburgh might take the play here, bring up third and long, or they might uh, push Brigham Young a little deeper, being a 10-yard penalty. Jim, this brings up a good point. If you're coaching, you're going against LaBelle Edwards. My opinion, you take it because it's nothing. They're used to uh, picking up those 12, 15-yard cut possession patterns. Let's see what folks. I think is holding during the pass. Second out. Well, Salvatefta turned out a 10-yard penalty, though. What's 59? Well, you're That's talking about Garrick. You're talking about a brave guy. He does have the face mask. That's exactly what the call is. But I really like this guy. He wasn't supposed to play. Lavelle Edwards, who really cares about his players, just like Fos Fazio, he told him, you ought to give it up. You're, you're talking about bone against bone with that knee. He says, no, I want to play. And he can still run. I watched him yesterday. He can move. He has no cartilage in his left knee after seven operations. Second and long. That's a good rush. Down the flat, it comes here at the tailback. Smith up at the sideline. 25 and jumps over a couple of tacklers to the 28. Melvin Dean tripped him up, but that was a little release pass by Bosco. The heat was really on him, and he released it out here to Smith. Well, look at Sapio get Bosco's face immediately. Look at Smith. He was a gutty, tough kid. He hadn't played until this year. He'd run back punts. He was a wide receiver, and he does sacrifice his body. He plays paratrooper there. You want to stay on the ground. Watch Kozlowski. Kaz is the guy who had that bad Achilles, and he limped for a long time. Had an opportunity to work with his brother, Mike, at the University of Colorado. This is a tough family. Nice block on the play by Kaz, but it is third down and uh, long yardage to go. Bosco, he on again, up the middle, and he's got his man in the backfield, Sikahima. It'll not be a first down, however. Good rush by Bill Sapio, the left end. Put the pressure on Bosco, as they figured Pittsburgh would try to do. The completed pass, though, falls short of the first down by four yards. Fourth and four, and in comes Johnson as Dante Wilder trots on the field to run it back. There's the ball for Johnson. He boom won 80 yards. Yards last year, as you said, an NCAA record against Wyoming, averaging over 60 yards a punt. Low snap. Josh still got it, and here's the kick. End over end. Up comes Wiley, takes him around the 21, the sidelines, and out of bounds around the 30. So Pittsburgh will take over again, but back in its own territory with the score. Brigham Young three, Pittsburgh nothing. And we'll be back in a minute. Today, ESPN will be proud to announce his association with Chevrolet Scholarship Program. ESPN 
will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. Chevrolet then will honor those selections, donating $1,000 to each college's general scholarship fund. This is the beginning of the Chevrolet Scholarship Program's 14th year, and we're very proud of First down play, Pittsburgh, from Jimmy Rowling back inside his tent. Continuing over the middle, now it's caught by Casper around the 38-yard line. Jeff Casper. Excellent speedy receiver. Been a steady backup now for three years, and now he's getting a chance to start. You saw Bo Spazio. Let's keep it going. The crowd is about McIntyre made a little move that time that opened Casper up. He had a little swing, and that throws the linebacker to more to the underneath coverage. We'll see the two-minute drill here of John Kajini. His team's trailing by three, and Pittsburgh will try to beat the clock downfield. See if they can at least tie it, maybe go ahead. Side by Casper again, out of bounds, and near the 50-yard line. Well, I think they say he was juggling it as he goes out of bounds, so they won't give it to him. That'll stop the clock with 149 left. Let's take another look. All you need. He was definitely a bouncer, but you may be right. Let's see if they got him juggling ball. Casper really drives you off the line of scrimmage. And the key here, Jim, as we get a look here, and they say he's juggling it. Who's to say they're a lot closer than we are? The key when you drive somebody off the line of scrimmage is we get another langer, uh, another angle, I should say. And there's the juggle going out of bounds. So you make the decision. You be the referee. Well, it was very, very close, but it's uh, in. Complete pass for Pittsburgh. Stops the clock at 148 with second and 10. They're at the 38. Long count by Kajimi. Kajimi on a quick pass. Hits on Wallace in the out here at the 40. Wallace now cannot escape. Taken there by Jeff Sprouse. Sprouse did a good job just containing him until help arrived. Got a stun on from the outside as we got a timeout. Let's take a look here because Wallace is shaking and baking and he's one-on-one -on -one because there's a stun as they come from the outside. Now watch Wallace, the guy who had a basketball scholarship to Loyola. This is not easy in the open field, but there's a good shirt sure tackle by number 25, Jeff Sprouse. This is a guy who came from junior college has really come on strong to help this secondary. Sprouse has probably been the surprise of practice for Brigham Young. Here's Jimmy having a conference over here with... Fazio Foge is still arguing about that uh, catch that wasn't a catch by Jeff Casper. Even though Foge is on the opposite side of the field, he thought he could see over that ball. Foge says, I saw it. I'll help you. <laughs> now, <laughs> and Jimmy, who, by the way, is a cousin of Boom Boom Mancini, so he comes from a tough neighborhood, I'm too. not going to fight him. <laughs> Guy shoots uh, pretty good golf. Here's Lavelle Edwards now back to the pit sideline. Time remaining, 129. Pittsburgh's 53 yards away. This is amazing. Five years ago, we started this at ESPN. Now we're doing this stuff live. great. Where were you five years ago? Well, let's see, for September 7th, I think, will be the fifth year birthday. I was down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina. George Rogers, who was to win the Heisman Trophy, played that game and did nothing against the target. I had uh, Chuck Fairbanks first game at the University of Colorado. They played Oregon, and Oregon came into Boulder and won that ball game. So five years ago? Doesn't seem that long ago, does no, it, Irv? Well, we're delighted to be with you this year with exciting football coming up and the College Football Association Series live here on ESPN. A great doubleheader today after the BYU pit game. We'll be going to Tampa for the Florida versus Miami game. Then coming up, teams like Boston College, Texas, Auburn, Navy with their great running back. Third down about a yard to go for Pittsburgh and they go to Marlin and Big McIntyre drives it over into Brigham Young territory for a first down. Should be without a huddle now. Here we go. Now 124 left. And we'll go quickly. The quiet guy, McIntyre, he's just a pretty good football player. I like those two fullbacks, Bailey McIntyre. Here we go live. Pittsburgh huddling up quickly. Clock is running with 120 to go. Penalty flag thrown. So we got might be a legal procedure. And that's going to be it. Illegal procedure against Pitt. They did not come to the full set for a second before the snap. That would be my guess, or maybe a, a lineman might have moved in there. All right, there's Foge, and he uh, is giving him the instructions. Foge I don't is see his little guy. Illegal procedure. Offense. Boy, First illegal, down. illegal procedure covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> I don't see Vince. His little son. He's usually with him on the sideline. Name for Vince Lombardi, one of the heroes of Foge Fazio. Well, it's first and 15. And I chased out about it from Jimmy looking for the sidelines, pulled down from behind around the 46-yard line. Clock still rolling, and now Pitt stops it. They'll have one. That's the final timeout that they'll have. I think maybe one left. 
with one minute, seven seconds to go. So Jimmy had nobody open, tried to get up the sidelines, was cut off there, and now he's going to go over and huddle up with his coaching staff, Joe Moore, the offensive coordinator and coach Faison. Hamilton did a good job that time. BYU momentarily lost their lanes, but they closed pretty good. They do run to the football well. Pittsburgh trying to get on the board, down 3-0. Kajemi has done a very good job throwing to Wallace and Casper. The one thing that has really hurt, you don't have a Wilson to tight end. That means you can double the outside and play your tight end. That's no knock on Johnson, but he's a blocker first and a pass receiver second. Clint Wilson, who's out for the month of September, would give you that threat in the middle, finding the uh, seams of the zone. Here comes Kanjeme. His deep threat is Jeff Casper, 88, and I would imagine that Brigham Young's going to be doubling him, Irv, because he has tremendous burning speed. He's the one guy who can get you the home run. Wallace, a great receiver, but like Kozlowski, he doesn't have great speed. Scales is in the slot, Jim. Now he can burn. Over the middle it goes, and it is caught by the tight end, Dexter Edmonds, around the 20-yard line. Edmonds, a fast tight end, replaced Johnson, and he can catch the ball. It's his second reception today. Isn't that what it's all about? Your tight end is a key man. A minute one left. they got a lot of time. What a job by Kanjemi, and Edmonds finds the seam of the zone. Look good. Pitch ready to go. That clock will start as soon as the ball is spotted. Here we go. 58 seconds rolling. Pitch got plenty of time. Now Kanjemi looking. Kanjemi goes out to the ball and McIntyre. He cuts out in the flat. It's going to be just a short game. Maybe not that. McIntyre hit hard by Leon White, who covers that uh, strong line by post as well as any you'll see. All right, I'll tell you, now Pittsburgh's trying to get Bailey in there, a little confused. Can Jimmy take in charge? Look at the leadership, Jim. All right, it is 35 seconds to go. Here's Can Jimmy. He'll get this from the air. Batted down over the middle. Number 79, Bill, was right in there to bring it down. That's Brad Smith, who batted Larry Hamilton. Larry Hamilton, the left tackle, got up in the air and stopped that one. It stops the clock with 30 seconds to go. And it brings up third and ten. So this will give Jimmy another shot at it. If you're thinking field goal now, you're looking at about a 37-yard kick. Boy, did they come up though with uh, the extra threat in Dexter Edmonds? Because now you got the whiteouts with both Casper and Wallace. And of course, they can swing the ball too. Got scales in there. Edmonds is still in there. Scales again is set in slot. Here's Kajimi, four men out, rush on Kajimi, down inside, and it is caught out of bounds inside the 10, at the 8-yard line. That one caught by Bill Wallace, the sure-handed receiver, it's put in. BYU fans thought he might have been juggling. Let's take a look at Wallace as he catches the ball. Was he juggling the nerves? Well, it looked like it from here, but, you know, first thing to go up here in the eyes, let's take a look at Billy Wallace as he has the ball. And uh, you can make a case if yep, you were uh, back at the Marriott Center. First and goal for Pittsburgh at the Brigham Young 8. 24 seconds to go in the first half. Can Brigham Young stop the Panthers this time? Can Jimmy on the draw gives his throw back Bailey stop inside the five. They got one they time out remaining. Pittsburgh, and they'll use it right here, stopping the clock with 18 seconds to go. Well, now, can Jimmy will have no more times to stop the clock, so he can go for the end zone a time or two and try with a pass. I doubt he would try a running play, maybe one, and then a quick huddle. Oh, I think what you do is move the pocket and let can Jimmy do something on the run. He's smart enough that I think if, uh, first of all, he'll get rid of it and throw it out of bounds if possible. Look what we got coming up, Jim. Oh, yes, Florida, Miami. That comes up here tonight, 7.30. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire down there. Auburn at Texas. I'll be out in Austin for that one. What a great match that may be for first place in the country. Then North Carolina, Boston College. And you're going to see Doug Flutie as Jim Sips reports the action there. And finally, Navy with a great Napoleon, uh, Napoleon McCallum. Over to Arkansas who's got a new coach. Good hey, Freddie yours, Hatfield is a class guy. Runs that wishbone. You all saw what he uh, did against Notre Dame. The guy can coach. This is interesting here now because Pittsburgh is thinking this. They must at least get three, get the momentum, and be tied. They'd love to get six or seven, and the key is right here, Jimmy. You were talking about a guy who has as good awareness as anybody in college football. You mentioned Flutie. He reminds me of Flutie. i got to believe they'll roll toward Wallace. Keep in mind, the tight end did a good job, and they just slide to drift him into a seat. Wallace is to the right. Also, the right of Chuck Scale set in the slot. Casper stood out the left side. The tight end over there is Dexter Evans. Four man down down here, Jim. Man to man. Here we go. Lobs at the end zone. It is incomplete. Incomplete. Brigham Young came up with the ball, but it was caught out of bounds by Jeff Sprouls. Thought he had an interception. Well, that was just up for grabs. Well, the Cougars had their best athlete, maybe, in Kyle Morrell back in the 
in the action here. It's straight man. Boy, can Jimmy just puts it up. You need the tall R.C. Owens type of leap here. Well, that was close to an interception, but he was juggling it. Jeff Sprouls, good replay. One more angle, Jim. Clock winds down to 13 seconds, and once again, we're live, and can Jimmy was bringing him up to the line of scrimmage. Third down. This could be it here for Pittsburgh to take the lead. Can Jimmy, can Jimmy looking, can Jimmy rolling, high, can Jimmy now rush, throws an Indian trainer, he threw it away, he threw it away to set up the field goal. That is really pass. Jimmy, that was intelligent because Herman was putting the pressure on if he sacked and the Panthers run out of time. Seven seconds left, they go for three. Penalty flag down, Irv. Penalty flag is thrown, so wait, there may be an interference called here against Brigham Young. I think the guy has the best defense. Was that roughing the passer? I think they might have got Jim Herman. Seven seconds to go, though. So it gives uh, Pittsburgh another shot at it. After this penalty down to the two-yard line. And it becomes third. And dead ball two. foul. Personal foul. Defense. It's fourth down. Fourth, fourth down. down. The fourth down play. They're coming in with the field goal unit. In is Mark Brasco, a freshman. In his first collegiate game from Jeanette, Pennsylvania, he's a soccer-style kicker, and his attempt will be about 20 yards. 20,000 people want him to go for it. BYU takes a timeout, but this is the strategy. Hey, who said that the defense is left at the State Department? This has been a defensive struggle. Brasco, uh, Wiley will hold. Brasco will kick. It'll be from around the 10-yard line. They have not put the tee down yet. Both of those young men are from the same high school in Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Both are freshmen. So here they are teaming up for what stands at the moment to be a very important play. Oh, going to go for it. Hey, they voted. Here they come. They're going to go for it. Fazio just called his field goal unit off the field. He's going to disdain the possible tie and go for the touchdown with seven seconds to go on fourth down. They got fourth and two. Got a call early in the season, Jim. Boy, is that exciting, though. Now, well, Brigham Young now, as it puts, they can keep the lead here. They can stop them, but Pittsburgh can take the lead. I think both. Oh, And he's not going to be doing too well. Stop short of the 15-yard line. So that's twice today. Runners have tried to run it out of the end zone. Linnell Anderson is the man who stopped him for Pitt. And each time they've been stopped short of the 15-yard line. I've really been impressed with their special team play. What you do is find people who run to the football. And boy, I'll tell you, uh, Pittsburgh has them. You know, this interesting, Jim, at the half, Bill Frelick has five pancakes. And we've talked about that before. That means he's knocked his opponent on his back five times. Bosco comes out at 9 out of 15 for 88 yards in the first half. Sends Kozlowski wide to the left side. Hayes put over the right. 
Bosco on first down. Great protection. Bosco running again with little room. Lot of room over the 20 and takes it down on the 24 for what will be close to a first down. Almost a 10-yard run by Robbie Bosco. He did that twice in the scoring drive. Watch 50 Trevor Maddich once again. The Panthers lose their lanes up the middle. Maddich does a good job turning his opponent out right there, number 50. And here's Bosco who runs 4-7. He's not a Steve Young, but there are many of them like that. And he slides into second. He's smart. Smart player indeed. Nine-yard pickup on the play. Second down and one. Ball at the Brigham Young 23-yard line. Three nothing. The Cougars need later tonight, Miami versus Florida here on ESPN. Going to pass on second and one over the middle. Caught by the tight end, David Mills. First down at the 34. Troy Benson was there to halt him, but Mills got good position, and Bosco just drilled that ball in there perfectly on the spot. Tight end is so important. We saw in the uh, first half what Evans did for uh, Pittsburgh, and in this case, Mills has Benson all over him like uh, a cheap suit as Fodes looks on, and yet he's able to make the catch. It'll be a first down for Brigham Young. 3-0, the Cougars from Provo, Utah League. The first time they've come east in a long, long while, and they've been impressive so far. Bosco again. Bosco back up the middle. He has got Haysburg, the speedster, over the 40 to the 44. Close to another first down for Brigham Young. They're really eating off big chunks of yardage now. Bosco mixing up his receivers and then running in between. And he's moving the football all the way from the 14-yard line. They've come 30 yards already for to the uh, 44. Well, big drops that time by Benson and Aldersert. And this little drag pattern, there's a story on Adam Haysburg. He's the deep threat, but this time with the delay he drags across the middle is able to get the chores in. BYU now is sending in plays. They have shuttled a few in and they've also signaled some in. And there now is Mark Bellini. Outstanding receiver replaces Glenn Kozlowski. Bellini a walk on. He's off to the right side. Tommy your screen. Fake on the play action over the middle. Wide over Haysburg. He's got it down in pit territory on the 42. Hit down by Bill Callahan. But Haysburg, who got his chance last year when Edo was injured, came in and played it regularly then. Excellent speed. Watch him here. Watch Hamuli after he gets the fake there. He pulls the block off and then Bosco thrown in the middle. And this has been the weakness thus far. Oh, this half of either. Pittsburgh, they've had the deep drops. In this case, the linebacker's frozen because of the effort by Hamuli. We've got the injury right there. 94 walking off is Quincy, the defensive uh, down line. He looks like he'll be back. Tom Quince, never forget that fumble. He ran back 75 yards last year against West Virginia. It was Pittsburgh's longest touchdown play of the year. That was a great move, part of the highlight film. This year. I keep calling him Quincy. It's Quince. I get it right. Now Kozlowski and uh, Bellini both go wide to the right. You may be seeing the new passing star of Brigham Young being born here today, Robbie Bosco. Bosco runs the draw this time. Hey, Mooley up the middle. A big Hawaiian is chilled by Chris Dolman. Why, he won't forget that one for a few minutes. Dolman really clobbered Hamuli. This is the hitman. Let's take a look at the guy who looks so good against Illinois. Here he comes. Bow. You talk about a form tackle. Hello, hat to hat. Ooh. Well, he rung his bell for sure. You know, he's up to 245 this year. No loss of speed. He is a man. I, I just like the way he plays every down. Every snap is his. His forward motion got a yard. Second down and nine. Bosco again. Bosco fires the sideline. Got Haysburg over there. He's at the 31-yard line. But he grabs it. Then he's taken back upfield. But he gets his forward motion. Maybe a first down. Keith Tinsley covering at left cornerback. As the speedster Haysburg, you got to respect that speed. Drove his man downfield and then came back to the pass. Do you know how tough that is, though? Bosco threw that ball a long, long way. The key for a wide receiver, when you're running straight down the field, even though your feet have made the cut for one... Uh, one count, your head is straight ahead. That's what keeps that defender from closing quickly. This has been a long drive. They've driven over 50 yards now from their own 14 yard line for a first down to pit 30. Bosco again, good protection. All day he's got Bosco drills it. Intercepted by Pittsburgh. Back comes Callahan. Over the 40. Callahan the 50. He may go all the way. Nobody's going to catch Callahan. It's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. Bill Callahan, a junior from New Kensington, Pennsylvania, timed 
fit perfectly over. Well, they've always had a great player in the secondary. Here's a guy who once rushed for 250 yards as a tailback. He was a fullback as a freshman. He's an impact player. He runs away from Kozlowski here, runs away from the lineman. And Callahan has turned this thing totally around. BYU on the move. Bosco, con Bosco controlling things. And Bill Callahan has just given his ball club the lead. He's been a solid player for two years. You saw why. Just now. Well, he was replacing Flynn. That was to be their weak spot. It didn't look fair. And Pittsburgh has exploded into the lead. It's now Pittsburgh 7, Brigham Young 3. Today's game, BYU at Pittsburgh, is brought to you by Chevrolet. With the technology, the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and the value that make up today's Chevrolet. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Well, you live by the sword, you die by the sword sometimes, Herb Brown. I tell you, you talk about an impact play. You're looking at 10 to nothing, and all of a sudden Callahan, who was a sprinter in high school, mentioned what an effort he had, 350 yards one time as a high school tailback. What a move, boy, the crowd is fired. Up. It's all changed now. Here's Pat Vinecourt with a kickoff. High kick to the end zone. Back to Sikahima. This time he'll keep it in there. And uh, Brigham Young will start its own 20-yard line. Well, it was a joke for Brigham Young, but it has certainly fired up the spirits of Pittsburgh. A turnaround turnover all the way for a touchdown. He went about 80 yards. I haven't got the official count yet. We'll have him in a minute. But Pittsburgh has taken the lead 7-3. to three. I got him for 79, Jim. What's interesting, the crowd booed the Panthers when they left the field at the end of the first half, and Callahan turned it all around. He's a kind of a player. He's like uh, his opponent, uh, Morrell, for BYU. He can do things like that, and it was just a great move. Robert Parker's checked in the Brigham Young backfield at tailback, replacing Sikahima. They haven't seen Kelly Smith. The way he was shaking up or not, I don't know. But Parker is in there with Hamula. Bosco gives to Parker on the sweep left. Behind the line, he's caught. Gets away, taken down the line of scrimmage. Horse collar tackled by Reggie Smith and Chris Goldman. Threw in for a loss of a yard. It'll be second and 11. Reggie Smith just looked like a man possessed that time. Dolman misses, but look at He gets some help from Reggie Smith. Here is Dolman, who had the good hit just a moment ago. Now, he misses this time, but it's tough to sweep Pittsburgh. They really run to the football well, and here's Smith, who's just a pretty tough kid. He was a nickelback a year ago. He's the kind of guy you find a spot for. He's a good athlete, and here's the reason why. Look at this hit on Parker. Almost a face mask here by the second man. Watch it. Reggie Smith right there, but he did not get the face mask. Bosco second down. He chased out of pocket. Fires it. Incomplete. It's a forward pass. He was hit as he went down. But an incomplete pass. The pit fans won't like it. John Carter and Dennis Arteo was right in trying to almost sack Bosco, but the arm was coming forward. It'll be incomplete pass. Third and 11. Watch Dolman once again as he's just gone crazy. Dolman like a man possessed. He's getting a lot of help here from teammate John Carter. But right now, Pittsburgh, after that interception by Callahan, they've got Bosco on the seat of his pants. Well, Pittsburgh is really aroused. You can see it. And a big play like that can turn a ball game completely around. As Erdogan said, Brigham Young appeared to be marching right in for a touchdown. They were going 10 yards in a whack. Then came the interception. And now it's a different type ball game. Third and 11. Bosco needs a big one. Over the middle. Got a man there. Koslowski intercepted again. Out of the back door is Tinsley. Tinsley at the 30. To the 20 and out of bounds in Brigham Young territory. That was off the hand of Koslowski. Tipped in the air. And Tinsley was there to bring down the second big turnover of this quarterback hit. And the Panther fans are on fire. I tell you, you work on that drill every day in practice. It's called the tip drill, and this is exactly what happens. Kozlowski is open. Now, the ball is thrown instead of on the left shoulder, or the right shoulder. It's thrown on the left shoulder, so it's tough. Here's Tinsley, a guy who just hangs around and has done his job. The sophomore's 5'11", 195. He's on the indoor track team. But the key here, Jim, is that you do work on that tip drill, and it pays off. That's why the coach tells you over and over again, and it pays right here. Here's the pitch back to Ironhead and Craig Hayward. The talented freshman tries the right side for just a minimal game. Still over 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Pittsburgh leads 7-3. They're threatening to add to that right now for a second and nine at the Brigham Young 19-yard line. Two big interceptions. Jim, once again, that's that's the attack of the Panthers. They love the weak side. They like to get you a, a strong side. It's not like pro ball. You go on the boundary. Swallows down the bottom of the screen. Cast off the left. They give it to the fullback, Bailey, first man through. 
gets by one man and then is taken down by another wave around the 17-yard line. It'll be third down, about seven coming up now for Pittsburgh as Brigham Young's trying to dig in here and uh, keep this thing from getting out of hand. Well, the BYU defense has been sensational today. They have done their job. They've had the interception. They've had a goal line stand. They had a short yardage thing. They've been sensational. They're called upon again. Third down. Can Jimmy, I believe, will put it up. Come out with a single back set. Single coverage over here on Casper. Jimmy goes over the middle, and he's got Scales inside the five-yard line. And Jimmy goes to his tailback, Chuck Scales, first and goal at the four. It's a great call. Ron Turner is uh, up in the booth, along with uh, Joe Moore and Foge Fazio. They come up with that single-back setup, and Scales is lined up in the slot. They've kind of ignored him when he's been here. There's a story on him. And his, uh, and his, as we mentioned, his daddy played for the Steelers. Good-looking play, and they're on the move right on schedule. First and goal. First time Scales ever carried the ball, he scored a touchdown. It was against West Virginia. The guy can do it all as he showed there. First and goal for Pittsburgh. Now they're going to power backfield in there. Both fullbacks are given to McIntyre. He tries right behind uh, Freilich. That's the play everyone looking for at the end of the half. Picks up a couple yards. Down around the two. Let's see where they're going to spot it. There's Big Mac, Marlon McIntyre. Rushed for 414 yards last year, which was second among the returning Panthers. We've talked a great deal about Freilich, and you're not just talking about him because it's true. The 94 yards rushing that the Panthers had the first half, 64 of those came over Freilich's tackle position, and he didn't give up a sack in the first half. Pittsburgh once ran 11 straight plays over Freilich and picked up 56 yards. Let's see if they go to the left again. Yeah, right behind Freilich, touchdown. Well, he just Bailey. drove him into the end zone. Bailey right behind Freilich. The ball takes him into glory land, and Pittsburgh leads it 13 to 3. This is why he's the best in the country. Christie blocks down, but look at Freilich just drive his man into the end zone. The Panthers have turned this thing totally around. Let's isolate on Freilich. 79, look at him get off the mark, using the left shoulder. That is upper body strength. You know, they're great believers in weights here, Jim. And rather than uh, go with just the bench, they really squat. The legs are the most important part of the body they feel here. We've got a guy by the name of Buddy Morris, as we see the extra point. He's really done a good job in the weight room. Mark Brasco gets the extra point, and now it's Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 3. Action stayed right with us. There's more coming from Tampa, Florida tonight. The University of Florida Gators, peace is gone, but another quarterback will be there. Miami has uh, got a great one going, of course. And Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire will bring you that game tonight here on ESPN. Bernie Rosar, what a passing threat he is. Back deep now, nine court kicks off. Sika Hino waiting. Comes out of the end zone, takes it at the six. To the 20. Sika Hino runs it back out to about the 23. Pittsburgh goes, turned this game around with his defense. Tinsley and Callahan picking off the interceptions. Well, there's the story. And of course, Scales coming out of the slot caught the ball that took him down there. And then Freilich just took over from there as they used the fullback game. The fullback belly has been a big play at Pitt for a number of years and able to get it done behind a guy like Christie and Freilich are in good shape. Keep in mind, Jim, this ball club, the Cougars are used to coming, or they're not used to coming from behind, but they can come from behind because they put it up a lot. Well, it's an interesting situation. They've got two big passes picked off. Bob go and his uh, start here for 1984. He's going to stay right at the air. Sideline pattern and he hits Haysbert out of bounds. Nice gain up around the 34. Maybe a first down. So Bosco comes right back, show you the great confidence they have in their passing game. Despite the killing uh, interceptions, he sticks right to his aerial game. Well, he's done a good job. Uh, Callahan really impressed me. You know, the Pittsburgh secondary was supposed to be suspect. And Callahan is the guy they were counting on to really solidify. It. Boy, that interception turned things totally around. Then Tinsley on the tip play gave their second score. First down for Brigham Young, just short of the 34. We bring the tight end Mills now off to the left side. Bosco going to go right back to the air. Bosco plenty of time up the middle, and it is broken up, almost picked up again. All right, that one was very nearly picked up again by Callahan, who broke it up. They're trying to go to Mark Bellini, 
and Callahan has really had Bellini's number. Well, I'll tell you, not only does Bosco uh, have problems with Callahan, look at Apke, who's a pretty fair linebacker. Unfortunately, he's got uh, all his and, uh, and Benson to compete with, but that is excellent coverage. The ball, I'm sure that Bosco would have preferred to throw elsewhere after taking another look. Well, let's see if Bosco keeps putting it up. He's been flirting with lightning here in the third period. He's been stunned twice, and still he goes the air. Both wide receivers to the left. Here goes Bosco again. Bosco now has to run out of there, and he's taken down hard. Great play by John Carter, the freshman from Louisiana. The number 89. You know, excuse me, Jim. This guy graduated a little early, so he was able to practice during spring ball. Now, you talk about a great prospect. Foch Fazio has had two outstanding recruiting years. One of these guys is uh, John Carter. He's big. He's about 245, and he just comes in and crunches Bosco. They keep their lanes pretty good this time. That ball got away there, but the play was dead. Angie, Louisiana. And look on with pride here to John. Carter making a fine debut at Pittsburgh. Third and 15 for Brigham Young. Pittsburgh is showing blitz. Bosco, no, they pull back. Bosco in the back. Bosco going deep downfield. He's caught by Bellini for a first down. Up over the 45. They're going to say he trapped it incomplete. Ball looked like it was picked right off the turf, and the official on top of the play says, yep, it did touch the playing field. It's an incomplete pass. Once again, is Carter. Here's the ball as it is trapped right here on the ground, but Carter's the one who caused that. Good call. That brings on the punter, Lee Johnson. Now he needs a big watch. Bosco taking the punishment here. This is Carter. Well, this guy gets a little uh, maturity. He's just a freshman, 18-year-old John Carter, not too shabby. Johnson's in. Dante Wiley waiting. Johnson really hasn't hit a monumental punt yet. And here's this one off away from Wiley. Takes on the 30 on the run. Wiley the sidelines and out of bounds around the 37. Flag is dropped over there, but I think just to mark the ball. Clock shows seven minutes, 17 seconds to go. Foge Fazio's Panthers have come back roaring here in the third period. Looked as though Brigham Young had him on the run early in the third quarter. Then came the timely interception by Bill Callahan. Listen to this. During the run back, collecting by the receiving team. Well, that'll cost Pittsburgh, and that'll put them back deep. But right now, the Panthers holding a 14-3 lead, and it was set up by their defense. Interceptions, one of them giving the touchdown, 79-yard run. Let's see if we can pick out to who got the clip. Here's special teams, and there's the clip right there. Is uh, the culprit. I hate to pick on anybody, but uh, Mark Rich is the guy on special teams. There's the guy they can't afford to lose. John Carter. Well, he hit the kill. Seven minutes to go in the third period. The score, Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 3. Turn around in Pittsburgh in this third period, set up by defensive plays, two interceptions, has brought Pittsburgh from a 3 0 deficit to a 14 3 lead. One of them, a sensational run back of an interception, almost 80 yards. And Jimmy stumbles as he comes rolling out of the pocket and goes down. He lose two or three yards on that play. Looked like he just lost his footing. Other scores, Air Force. Comfortable lead over San Diego in the third quarter, 34-10. West Virginia leading Ohio University Bobcats, 10-0 in a game down at Morgantown. Don Nalen having another good season, looks like, coming on. <laughs> Pittsburgh back in a hole now. The loss brings up second down and 13 inside the 20. And Jimmy gives up the medal to his fullback. And busting in there for a short game. Bring up about uh, third down and ten. It gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Mark Bailey, they call him Beetle. He follows his blocks about as well as anybody, number 21. Tailback is Scales and the fullback Beetle, uh, Beetle Bailey. Third down and Kajimi going to the air. Goes down the left side, intercepted by Brigham Young. Picked up on the 30-yard line. And this is Allen. Allen is back out of bounds. Looked like he's going the wrong direction for a minute. But here, an interception the other way. As the Cougars come back, Mark Allen, a senior from Fullerton, California. And he makes Miller play. Boy, does he ever. His second of the day. They're trying to go to Wallace, the bread and butter guy. Here's the pass. And Allen just steps in front as Wallace is unable to get there. Look at this now. Bam, he gets hit one time, turns around, goes the other way, gets 
offensive block. Allen gives his football team the ball at the 21-yard line. Allen couldn't seem to find his bearing there. He is going one direction or the other, but here's an opportunity for Brigham Young to get back in the game. Bosco's got it in great field position at the Pittsburgh 21. Both wide receivers, Karslowski and Hayesburg, are to the left. Bosco. Bosco fires out the left side, clearing over there to the tailback Smith. The two wide receivers cleared out, and Smith came out of the backfield. Chris Goldman, though, wasn't fooled on the play. But Adam made the stop at the 16-yard line. Pick up about five on the play. It'll be second down and five. It's so important that uh, BYU gets something done right here. They're down 14-3, 5.38 left in the quarter. There's plenty of time, but Carter and Dolman have been so effective and such a factor putting on a rush. They've got to do a job right here and get something on the board. Now Bellini is in there. Bellini's had trouble with Callahan today. Twice he's had passes picked off. There goes Pittsburgh jumping the gun, I think. Dennis Satea, a nose guard. Unless a Brigham Young lineman move, this will cost Pittsburgh a first down. Atiyah comes right out of there, and Walter Johnson goes... Defense! Well, it's on Atiyah. Speaking of Walter Johnson, the baseball name, we can look over the far sidelines down where Shinley Park used to be, where old Forbes Field was, and the statue of Honest Wagner stood there for so many years. They moved it down to Three River Stadium now, Irv. I saw that. Great landmark. When we went by. That's something. It's great. Boy, you got to be impressed with Trevor Matt. He had the patience that time, did not move. I think this is the first down. Well, they're going to say it is second and inches. Second down and just inches to go at the 11-yard line of Pittsburgh. So Bosco's got his uh, team rolling here after the interception. He needs a touchdown. Brigham Young does not need a field goal. They need a touchdown, a two-point conversion to get him in close. They give him the fullback. Here, comes. Here, here, here it is, and he is going to score. Hamuli works his way in, broke a couple of tackles, and went in to score for Brigham Young. And the Cougars are right back in business. It's now 14 to 9. I wouldn't be surprised they go for two. Take a look as they run off their weak side. Watch Smith, a little guy. There's his block right there. This is one of their key plays. Hamuli is going to be one of the best players going. This is their weak side blunt, the fullback led by the halfback. Excellent play, Jim. One more time, Hamuli. But look at the block there by Little Smith. Weighs 178. Hamuli puts his shoulder down, takes him on, and he just wants that touchdown. He gets in. It's 14-9. He's going to be a great one. Just a sophomore. He was player of the year in Hawaii. Averaged almost uh, four and a half yards a carry last year. Number 35, Lake Hemule from Laia, Hawaii. Well, Bosco stays in. You see, one point really doesn't help Brigham Young right here. 14-9, just as good as 14-10. But 14-11, you're a field goal away from taking the lead. And you put it on the left hash mark because you want running room for your right-handed quarterback. Or at least your field goal away from getting a tie. Four minutes, 53 seconds to go in the third period. Bosco, he's got 21. Kelly Smith, a tailback, fullback, Hayburley. He's got two tight ends, and Kozlowski comes in motion. Now he goes back. And he's rolling toward Kozlowski. Here's Bosco looking the end zone. Fires it back the other way to Kozlowski, and he is out of the end zone. Incomplete. Now, Kozlowski's going to say he was taken out by a defender. Another close call. We've had two or three of those today. They're still protesting Kozlowski is that he was hit out. You see, if you're hit out by a defender, and it's supposed to count as being in bounds. Now the official says, come on, let's get on with the ball game. The try for two points is no good. That remains 14 to 9. Now you see that spot, Garrick, Craig Garrick, the offensive captain is claiming right here the referee James Garvey that his man caught it in bounds and was pushed off by defense. But he lost that argument for a long way. So the score now is Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 9. And we'll be right back. Every Brigham Young now back in contention here late in the third period. This score after an interception, and interceptions have led to the last three touchdowns. It is now 14-9 Pittsburgh after the try for two points failed. thought Bosco did a great job. It appeared that Kozlowski was up in the air after Bosco, Bosco that is, throws across the body to him. The official rules that he's out of the end zone, so uh, the Cougars are down five. 4.53 left in the third. Lee Johnson now will kick off. 
and uh, back deep receiving. Dante Wiley, freshman from Jeanette, Pennsylvania. Here's Johnson, number 10. Not too deep. End over end. Out comes Hayward at the 10. Here comes Ironhead. 20. 25. He takes a few players with him for the last three yards and goes out of bounds around the 29-yard line. Well, let's take a look at that controversial try for two points. They're going to go to Kozlowski. Was he in bounds when he caught it, and was he pushed out? Right, Koz will go up right here, and it looks like his feet are going to come down inbounds. He gets hit pretty good, and it looks like uh, they knock him over the end line. It appeared that he was well in bounds when he went up in the air, and we can't tell the angle where he was coming down in bounds or not, but he definitely was hit and move. Nevertheless, it's 14-9, hit and lead. Here comes Pittsburgh now. Let's see how they snap back. First and 10. They give it to the tailback. And running hard is Chuck Scales. Gets a game of about five or six yards. Here's the scoring drive now for Brigham Young. Now, of course, the key play after the interception, Hamuli off the weak side on that blunt play, got a good block from Smith, able to take it in. And there's the time of possession. Offensive line for Pitt, Fraley, Christie, Petty John, Brown, Dixon, and Tom Johnson, the tight end. The backfield from Jeannie, Scales, Bailey, Casper, and Wallace, the wide receivers, and this is Scales on the sweep. Cuts back upfield around the 38, 37. He's got to get almost to the 39-yard line for first down. They are running behind Tom Johnson, who literally will knock your block off, and the sticks continue to move. BYU trying to dig in, but this Panther ball club up front, Jim, when they want to run the football, they are really impressive. Love this block and tight end Johnson. They'll measure here. All, uh, all they do when they move it on the ground, the sticks keep going forward. Four minutes, nine seconds remaining in the third period. And after this game ends, following the scoreboard, we'll be going to Tampa, Florida for Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. And tonight's big game between defending national champion Miami Hurricanes. What a tense victory they had for Jimmy Johnson over Auburn. Bernie Rosar with a Kozar with a great passing game. And tonight they'll take on the Florida Gators. And you can throw everything out the window, as they say in that one, Irv. That's a rivalry down in the Gator State. Well, we get a look at Kozlowski as he relaxes a minute ago. You talked about Florida going against Miami. Miami last week against Auburn really impressed with their offensive line. Glenn wanted to say hello to his wife and his two youngsters out in the Provo. They're watching the telecast. Very likable young man. I had a good visit with him yesterday during practice. In the same situation, can Jimmy went on the sneak to take the middle linebacker out of it. Let's see if they do it again, third and short. Third and actually less than a yard. Ball at the 38-yard line. Throwback is McIntyre. Tailback is Scales. Double tight end. They give it to McIntyre, the fullback. He is standing straight up. They stand him straight up, and that depends where this is marked. Leon White really plugged that hole up for Brigham Young. They spotted on the 39, and I think it'll be a first down. All right, here it is. The linemen get down, and all they do is submarine. That leaves it to the linebackers up high, and you can see White is doing his job, but they do pick up the first. That's good goal line defense, but not that much yardage involved. Panthers pick up the first 341 left in the third. Bosco has made a great debut here as the starting quarterback for Brigham Young. And he has his team right in contention. And Jimmy with a quick out goes to Wallace the far side, gets a game of about five or six at the 45, and then he is taken down pretty hard over there. Govea was one of the first men to get to him. Well, that Govea is a good line. These are good linebackers, White and Govea. Govea has done an excellent job. He got help once again from 22 Allen, who's had a sensational ball game. A couple of interceptions, some key tackles. They bring Edmonds out now and uh, probably get Tom Johnson back in there, who's maybe a little bit better blocking tight end. Let's see if they come to the right this time. They got Johnson in there, double tight end, high in the backfield. Up oh, they go back to Walker Scales, and Scales is going to be hit on the 46. Leon White again. He just slid off a block, takes a side, and gets the chores done. Third down coming up and three yards to go at the 46-yard line of Pittsburgh. Wow, ah, Pittsburgh leading 14-9. They came from behind after trailing 3-0 at halftime. Interceptions have been the store of the third period. Two by Pittsburgh, one by Brigham Young, each leading to a touchdown. Wallace is out the right side. Stuck to run for three yards. Let's see if he goes to the air. 
and gives it to a tailback, going back on the counter play, and Scales is in trouble. He's thrown for a loss back inside the 45-yard line. Brigham Young read that play beautifully. They try to counter play, faking a sweep right, going back to the opposite side, but Brigham Young wasn't being fooled at all. Earth. Watch 34 wide. He forces him to change his angle right there, and then he gets some help from his friends. Kyle Morrell comes in to clean up. Help Dave, David Neff was in there, number 55. Fourth down now, punting play. Chris Jellick in for Pittsburgh. That punting game has been outstanding today. And back deep, Robert Parker stands for Brigham Young. Nice punt. Parker comes up. Now it's going to be taken by Sikahina at the 10. Sikahina tries to break through, cannot pull down the 15-yard line. And so Brigham Young takes it, but 85 yards away. 14 to 9, Pittsburgh in the lead. And we'll tell you that on Sunday, September 2nd at 1 p.m., it's stock car racing here, Southern 500 from uh, Darlington International Raceway. That's the granddaddy of the stock car races. Bob Jenkins, Jack Aroot will be there. And then at 5.30, that'll be live. Then at 5.30, the Escort Radar Warning 200 kart racing with Larry Newber and Gary Lee. We hope you'll be with us that day, you racing fans, here on ESPN. Who's got the pole? Richard Petty won 200 this year, won his 200th victory this year. The king of uh, stock car racing. First down for Brigham Young. Bosco from his own 15. Well, he's got the guts of a burger. Going to run it out of there. Gets it up to about the 17-yard line. Picks up a yard or two. Stopped by Bob Bukowski. A big right tackle, 255-pounder. Folks, he's he got himself some young down linemen that are really going to be good. We talked a lot about Carter. He went out with a cramp. Let's take a look at Bosco. Straight pocket passer. Drops back seven yards. Once again, the lanes are lost. There's Maddox doing his job. Breaks up the middle, but Bukowski... One of the uh, good defensive down linemen we've talked about. Pretty precarious the way he carries that ball there, Herb, out in one hand in that type of neighborhood. Been a boomerang on his Bosco. Bosco back again. Bosco's going for the home run. He's got his man down there. And it is caught down. And then dropped in to play the 35-yard line. That was Richard Orr sailing down under that long pass. Callahan and Tinsley were back there, but boy, Orr got a good beat on that pass. I thought he was going to haul it in. Let's take a look at Orr, who was injured. Didn't think he'd play today, but he's going to battle three Panthers. They go up there, and I'll tell you, it's a pretty good effort on both sides, so the ball falls incomplete. Wholesale substitutions as the Panthers will go with the nickel defense this trip. Coming out of there is Keith Tinsley, who has one of the big interceptions today for Fazio's Panthers. Foge Fazio trying to get into a bowl here for the third straight year, getting off the hopes to a good start, but his team leading by only five points, 14-9. Big third down play for Brigham Young. Bosco fires and is caught for the first down by Haysburg over the 30. Haysburg dives in after one tackler to the 33. First down and Brigham Young keeps the drive alive with about a half minute to go in the third quarter. There's Lavelle Edwards, won eight straight Western Athletic Conference championships. He's only won one prior to him taking over the helm out there. What a career he's had in his 12 years at the Provo. What's amazing, Jim, he was a single wing coach and he just made up his mind when he got a head coaching job that he was going to throw the football. Well, he got a great start with uh, Gary Scheide, and then came Gifford Nielsen, and you know the rest, Mark Wilson, McMahon, Young, and now here's Bosco looking sharp. Bosco again, Bosco up the middle, top of the tight end mills. Then he is jarred down inside the 40 by Caesar Aldersert. Not a better pair of linebackers around, as Irv said in the first half, and Aldersert and Benson, at least here in the east, and that ends the third quarter play from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. End of the third quarter, the score, Pitt 14, Brigham Young 9. The Y is for Young, and in Brigham Young, it is also for yardage, and that's what Brigham Young gets lots of through the air lanes. Now you're seeing the birth of a new star, perhaps, in their passing albums. Robbie Bosco, a junior from Provo, hometown product, taking over here for Steve Young, who's since departed. His father went to Utah State. He's got the help of that veteran line. They protected Gallagher for him here today. His team trails by five as we go in the fourth quarter, second down and five. Bosco, lots of protection, fires to the left side. Broken up again. 
intended for the fullback, Hamuli, and Chris Goldman, who didn't rush that time, was out there to slap it down with one big mitt. This guy is amazing. He's everywhere. Dolman has played a tackle today. He's played a defensive end, a backer. This guy runs like a deer for a man who weighs 245 pounds. Comes over, breaks it up. He picks that off. That's seven points. So it's third down and five for Brigham Young at their 39-yard line. Third and four, actually. They need to go to the 43. Koslowski, number seven, goes out the left. Split right is Hazlitt. And you can look for Bosco to put it in the air. Here comes an outside blitz, and they pick it up, and he fires incomplete. Intended for Sikahima, and he couldn't hold it. Around the 47-yard line would have been a first down. So the punting unit comes off for Brigham Young. We're in the first minute of the fourth and uh, final period from Pittsburgh. Pitt 14, Brigham Young 9. And coming later, Miami versus Florida from Tampa. What an opening day for college football 1984 here on ESPN. And we're so excited to be bringing you the action. This guy hadn't hit one yet, and he's very capable against the University of Wyoming. He hit an 80-yarder last year. Dante Wiley is the man waiting, and here is Lee Johnson. He would have won the NCAA punting championship last year if he had enough. He gets a good snap this time. And this one, and he puts the foot into this one. He's driving Wiley back inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. And here's Wiley over the 15, and that's about it. Maybe the 17-yard line. And a penalty flag goes down. Let's see if this is for clipping. If it is, Pittsburgh's going to be back in a hole. Both teams have had pretty good kicking games today, especially Pittsburgh, and that was supposed to be one of their weak spots. But it looked as though Fazio has done the job in filling that. Clipping on the run back, receiving team. So this will cost the Panthers. A look at the, look at the. Well, you can just read his thoughts, can't you, with Foge Fazio? Saying, my goodness, how many more times? Penalty is half the distance to the goal. For Clipping on the run back. First down. Early in the fourth period, it is Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 9. And Brigham Young at Pittsburgh is brought to you by Chevrolet with the technology, the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality and value that make up today's Chevrolet. And by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation quality replacement parts for just about anything that moves. AC Delco, the smart parts. Pittsburgh back inside its 10. First and goal at the nine yard line after the clipping penalty. Tom Brown is in at fullback. And the tailback is the freshman Hayward. They give it to Brown, the fullback, and he just rides behind his big lineman up to about the 14 yard line, maybe the 15. Good power run by Tom Brown, a sophomore from uh, here in Pennsylvania, 11 high school letters. I think the strategy, if you're a Pittsburgh fan right now, is to get that long, time-consuming drive on the ground, average four crack behind Freilich and Christie and Dixon and Petty John. There's a good example. Once again, they just continue to move those sticks with their ground game. Well, their power runners are in there. Brown and Hayward both just like to run over people. As you saw in Brown's run there, they give it to Brown again. He tries the middle, gets a first down. Spun down across the 20. So just like that, Pittsburgh picks up a dozen yards and two carries. It's first and 10 now outside the 20-yard line, and Jimmy has gotten them out of a deep hole. Well, you can see why Joe Moore is so respected around the country. They really get off the, uh, the blocks. They get into your numbers fast. They lock out if it's a pass, if it's a run. They are so strong. Look at the arms on those linemen. Let's see here if they go to Freilich. He's the left tackle. They love to run to the weak side. Yep, here they come to the big guy Hayward through the hole. Smacks up to the 25. Runs into a stack of white jerseys right there from Brigham Young and is taken back. Forward motion to give him about three yards. Well, let's see how Freilich's doing. Pettyjohn had the good block on this play. Let's watch 79 Freilich, considered by many the best ever to play uh, in college football. Uvea hangs in there pretty good. Once again, though, they pick up three. Now, they're not quite on schedule. You want to get four, Jim, but uh, this is where you make it up on your second effort, second down. Second down. Ball's over the 25-yard line. Fullback has got it again. Here comes Brown. He takes two or three hits. He keeps going forward. So Brown and Hayward are definitely running north and south right now and the ball's up to the 30-yard line and the Pittsburgh powers asserting itself they've just punched the ball up here's the look again from our Goodyear blimp here's some more scores fourth quarter now Air Force 34 San Diego 16 Falcons have led that game throughout 
So is West Virginia over High University. That's now 24 0 at the halftime in Morgantown. Morgantown always considered Pittsburgh as the great rival, and they still do. Two tight ends now for Pittsburgh. They're going to try to punch it out. Here comes Hayward. Going for the first down. It's going to be close. Hayward gets it out to the 32, and that's right on the spot for the first down. Let's see if uh, Ball's going to be spotted for the first, or we'll need a measure. It's nothing fancy. Tackle to tackle. They're not wasting any motion. Get off the line. Go on the first sound. They'll measure. Well, this is the hallmark of Pittsburgh teams. Great defense and power. Take a look at the matchup one more time between Frelick and Herman. Herman, 92, going against Frelick. Boy, Frelick turns him sideways, does a good job. I tell you, he'll open up some holes that Orson Wells and Kate Smith could have done through. I like that. <laughs> First down for Pittsburgh. The Panthers have roared back after being set back to the penalty from the 14. They've chalked up two first downs in a row, and they're now at the 32. Herman is coming out of there to get a, a break once again. Now the clock continues to roll. Jim, they've used up two minutes and 17 seconds. They were in trouble when they started this drive, and boy, it's been tackle to tackle. Big guys are in there still. Tom Brown and uh, Iron Head and Hayward. They give it to Hayward. That's a fake. And can Jimmy's going to try to go for book, and he's being chased back here, scrambling, looking for a receiver upfield. Book it up. Intended at the 50 yard line for number 42, Anthony Brown. Incomplete. Casper was also up there, and it was broken up on the play. Good play by Steve Heyman. Interesting call after being very effective on the ground, using up some time. They go play action, going for the whole ball of wax. Jemmy has got such great awareness. He does scramble. Cougars thought they had an interception here as the ball's up in the air. Ball was tipped there by Heyman. You know, he might have been trying to set up Brigham Young to get a pad, get him drawn in with all the running up the middle and try to set up something quick. They do not have that conclusive a lead, 14 to 9, and over 11 minutes and 40 seconds to go. Now they pitch it back to Hayward on the sweep. Hayward cutting back, and he runs right in the arms of a tackle at the 36-yard line. That'll be a game of about four. May look back to that first down call, though, Jim, because they were right on schedule, picking up four or five a crack. Now they're third and about uh, make it six. It's a passing situation. And things were going good. They were eating up the clock, and they've been very effective rushing the football. Now you put it up, bad things can happen when you do that. That was Bosco on the sidelines. He's waiting to give another chance. He's had that right arm oiled up today, and he's passed pretty well since the first quarter. There's Craig Hayward. They call him Ironhead. He's a very strong runner. But now it's a passing situation. Third and six for Kajimi. Dumps it over to Wallace. He can't hold it. Wallace got one hand on it, and then he was cracked hard by Jeff Sproles. Incomplete pass. Fourth down, Pittsburgh. And you may be right, Irv. That might not have been too good a call there for the pass play. Well, they've got such a good-looking offensive line, and they were using up the time. You put the hands, uh, you put the ball in the hands of a Bosco, and, and those receivers like Kozlowski, you get yourself a bit of a problem here. The kicking game has been very good for Pitt, and normally when a game is tight, the kicking game wins it. Jellick is back. Sikahima waiting. There's Jellick, number 16, just a freshman, playing here under the pressure of a very important opening intersectional game with Brigham Young. Sikahima is waiting for Brigham Young. Another good kick by Jellick. Sikahima's back. Blue shirts are down on top of him. Here's Sikahima going out of bounds. Boy, he finds an escape route in a hurry. Clock a stop of the score. Pitt 14, Brigham Young 9. Coming up later, the Chevrolet College Football Report. Then it's on to Tampa, Florida for the Hurricanes and the Gators with Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. Can Miami win two games in a week? On Monday night, they defeated Auburn in a dramatic game finish. Now they take on outside the floor. Here's Brigham Young. Another chance back deep. Bosco from his own 16. Sidelines. He's hit Haysbert as speedster. Haysbert up the sidelines around the 25. Sapio gets in there. But it's a substantial game for Brigham Young and stops the clock with 10.47 to go. I have a feeling that BYU must do something on this drive because when Pittsburgh gets it back, I don't think you'll see play action. I think they'll take the football and pound it out just like they started out on the last drive. I think Lavelle Edwards realizes that. They have got to do something on this drive. Lots of time left in this game. Bosco sets Hazebert to the right this time. Runs the draw play with uh, Hibuli, and he's got a nice game for a first down out to around the 28-yard line. They trapped that very effectively. That was the key play when they uh, got the field goal in the first half. Do a nice job where they uh, run the draw and trap it. 
54 there is the great linebacker for Pittsburgh, Troy Benson. Got a good chance to make All-American. Well, ESPN is mighty proud to be here. I'm happy you're joining us for College Football 1984. There's how it looks from a good year blimp from overhead. First down play for Bosco. Right back to the air lane. Bosco, plenty of time. Bosco with room. Now Bosco fires to the man. Oh, that's the tight end Mills. He's up to about midfield. Another first down. Bosco reading these defenses perfectly, but what stout protection he's had from Garrick and Maddich and Ane and Wong and Wright. Here it is, a three-man rush. Bosco scrambles, and once again, he pulls up short. He draws the pressure to himself, and then just dumps off. Gets an excellent effort there by uh, uh, Steve Heyman, who moves. Uh, moves around and catches the football. Last year, 11 straight wins for Brigham Young. They need a win here to believe with Miami for the nation's longest winning streak. Miami won its 12th in a row earlier this week. First down the 50-yard line. Bosco again with plenty of time. Bosco all day he's got. Bosco being chased. Now Bosco throws, and it is caught on a comeback by Orr. Caught down inside the 25-yard line. That'll be another first down for Brigham Young, and now they're rolling under Bosco. Who was Steve Young anyway? <laughs> I'll I tell you what's really impressive, though. When Bosco has to scramble, if you just continue to run the same pattern, he'll never find it. They come back to the football. Orr, who is not supposed to play, has given his ball club great position here. Brigham Young threatening again inside the Pittsburgh 30. They have come in a hurry from way back downfield on the right arm of Bob, Robbie Bosco. Nine minutes, 56 seconds. Lots of time left. We got a timeout here with the score. Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 9. Still cooking here in Pittsburgh, and that's just half of it. For coming later from Tampa Stadium in Florida, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire bring you all the action as the Florida Gators take on the defending national champion Miami Hurricane. What a battle down there in Florida. First and ten for Brigham Young. Pittsburgh fans calling for a defensive stand on the 28 yard line. Here's the reverse. Coming around is Bellini. Bellini throws the ball incomplete. And now you've got a flag total. That was a pass beyond the line of scrimmage. That's really going to be a hurting penalty. And you got a clip on Wong also. Boy, they had something going there. Wong, it looked like he's going to have a great block instead. He winds up with a clip. We've got a Pittsburgh Panther down. Dolman, it looks I like think. Dolman, yes. Could be Dolman. Oh, he's a tough kid, though, isn't he? Well, he's up. He ain't going to come out of there. He says, nah, yeah, I guess he's going to have, gonna to, have to. Can't put any weight on it. But that was uh, quite a flea flicker play, a reverse play with Bellini coming from a flanker spot and then throwing the forward pass. But I believe he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. It's going to be a penalty on Brigham Young. The question is now, is this going to be able to stop the Brigham Young drive? It started back inside the 15-yard line and went all the way to the Pittsburgh 28. Let's see if we can see where Dolman got hit. This is Lewis Wong, the offensive tackle. He'll wipe out a couple right here. And actually, uh, he was in good shape with Benson. Benson uh, avoids it, but there's the uh, the hit on Dolman. And then uh, Boy, we get the that. other flag. So hopefully he's going to be all right. He's an excellent player. Well, he hit that knee, though. Irv, and that's one spot where a player is uh, vulnerable when you hit in the knee like that. You know, I think Wong really was taking dead aim on Benson. Missed Benson, and here comes uh, Dolman. Well, he's in a lot of pain. Well, you really hope it's not a knee. You caught me like this. You hear that? You caught me like this. Right beside the knee. That's the one spot you can really get hurt in football. He just wasn't made for football. He's done everything he can. Penalty is declined. The clipping penalty, 15 yards, is accepted. First down again. That'll be first and 25 for Brigham Young. Penalty takes the ball back to the 41 yard line for the clip. And you saw it, it was a pulling a tackle, Lewis Wong. Now Brigham Young has got its work cut out for it. First and 25 from the Pittsburgh 41. Bosco fires downfield to Kozlowski at the 20. Kozlowski's got a first down inside the 10-yard line. And he's taken out of bounds about the 7. Back comes Brigham Young with a thing they know they can do best, the forward pass. Almost a sidearm throw from Bosco to a sure-fingered Kozlowski. Watch Kozlowski move when the pattern breaks down. Bosco scrambles to his left. 
and instead of quitting, Kyes will just keep on going. You talk about a great play. There have been three scrambles all to the left for Bosco, and BYU is uh, right now six yards away from taking the lead. 9.38 left. They started on the 17-yard line, Jim. First and goal at the six-yard line of Pittsburgh. Brigham Young has come back with a fury here after falling behind. They've had a great third and fourth quarter so far. Here's Bosco looking the end zone. He fires it, and it is broken up, intended for Smith, broken up inside the end zone. It'll be second and goal. Caesar Alderser made the big play for Pittsburgh to save the touchdown. Boy, that he did because it looked like Smith, who was a former wide out, had it going. Keep in mind, the Cougars missed on that two-point conversion. A field goal really does them no good right now. Lavelle Edwards, I think, realizes they have got to get in for seven. And you know something? If they score the touchdown, I don't think they'll try for seven, Herb. I think they'll go for two again, which would give them a three-point lead. And that's a big factor because it would prevent Pittsburgh from running it with a field goal, but that's a lot of ifs. Brogan Young's got a long way to go in the end zone. Second and goal with the six. Bosco looking to the end zone. Bosco clear time. All right. Bosco throws end zone. Incomplete. Intended for the fullback, Hamule. Broken up at the back line, incomplete. It'll be third down and goal. Pittsburgh is not getting pressure on Bosco. One of the reasons is that Dolman is sitting on the sideline with that bad knee. He's been the guy who's really pressured. Well, I tell you, you talk about pressure. There's a man who's been through it many times. Lavelle Edwards, and there's his rookie quarterback, and what a debut. Tom Crawford has replaced Dolman at defensive right end, a sophomore from Sharon, Pennsylvania, 220-pounder. Well, here's where the drama is, down on the floor of Pitt Stadium. Down here with the Panthers of old, the Jock Sutherland and Pop Warner played for so many national championships. Pittsburgh trying to protect the lead. Third and goal at the six. Touchdown by Brigham Young gives them the lead. Bosco first, end zone, and it is incomplete. Got to go Jim. Flag is dropped down here. Let's see if this can be holding or roughing the pass. They threw it right at Maddich's feet, the center. Penalty is against Brigham Young. Reggie Smith broke up the pass. Pittsburgh, could, uh, I doubt they'd call for the penalty. Give them another third down. If they take the play, it's going to be fourth down. What do you think? Well, I think they'll make them kick a field goal here. You don't want to give BYU a chance to go for the touchdown. Now they're talking with Troy Benson, one of the defensive captains for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh mod, uh, motto this year was, let's do more in 84. And they've had their hands full of a clawing Cougars of Brigham Young today. I think they're going to refuse it. Let's listen to Garvey. Illegal use of hands. Offense declined. They declined the penalty. Fourth down coming up for Brigham Young. And now Edwards is going to make the decision. Shall he try one more time for the lead? Or shall he go for the field goal and hope to get another possession? Nine minutes, 20 seconds to go. He's going to go for the three, unless it's a fake. I think this is a strategy all the way. There's plenty of time. The key is that Pittsburgh offensive line and keeping the ball on the ground once you get it back. They were in great shape. Got a little impatient. Tried to go with some play action. I don't think you'll see that uh, once they get the football back. Well, this has been a long drive, Irv, though, and the Brigham Young defensive players have had a long rest also. Here's Lee Johnson in to try and narrow the margin down to two points. The kick is in the air, and it is perfect. Through there, and Brigham Young is pulled within two with a field goal with nine minutes to go. The score now, Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 12. And we'll be right back. Stadium. And down there is from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise from Pompano Beach, Florida. Pilot is Richard Daniels from Burbank, California. And our cameraman, Lanny McKeegan. There's Dolman. Ice on that left leg or left ankle. So we're hoping that means it's not a knee. Well, you can live with that, Jim. It isn't what you want if you're Chris Dolman because he was sensational today. But he'll be back in action maybe a week, uh, maybe two weeks. But you're not talking about a knee in, in uh, orthoscopic surgery. Not an onside kick, would you think? Here? Oh, no, no. 9.15 to go. Plenty of time. Key is for the defense. Johnson will try to kick him deep. Johnson sails it, and this one might go out. No, it bounces the end zone. It comes to the 20. So Pittsburgh will get it at the 20-yard line. First and 10 on the touchback. And now we'll see. Well, I think what you'll see is they're going to go behind Freilich. 
and Christie. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for the Cougars. Keep in mind, they started on the 17 yard line. Most of the work done scrambling left by Bosco. Did a great job on one play to Kozlowski. Look how much time they used. Very little. Now, Pittsburgh, let's check their running backs. In there is Scales at tailback. The fullback is Bailey. They do not have the big guys in there at the moment. But let's see if they grind it out. First and 10 the play. Uh, play action fake. And Jimmy going for the long one downfield. He's got Wallace down there. It is caught. It is caught and out of bounds. Incomplete pass. So Wallace misread his spot. It was out of bounds when it came down. And it goes an incomplete pass. But Wallace was a good 10 yards back of everybody. He throws out a little longer. Herb, and it's six. Uh, I'll tell you, folks, your river gambler goes with play action on first down. I would have bet the house that they come out and uh, honk it in there and try and take it down the field. Now they've kind of committed, Jim. Second and 10. You see, Wallace, a little different. Wallace was back there waiting. That ball had been thrown a little deeper. He had a big lead on the defensive player. Now it's second and ten for Kajimi. Great drop this time. Kajimi being chased back there. Fires it and it is caught and then dropped his scales immediately. No appreciable gain on that and he'll get a short two or three yards. And more than that now. It's going to be third down. About six coming up here for Brigham Young. 25 is Jeff Sprouls. The surprise of this Brigham Young defense. It was good pressure that time. Uh, it's nothing like fans. And what a season of college football is going to be. More wide open, more exciting, but more than that, the greatest balance they've had in this game in a long, long time, if not ever. So what a fall it's going to be here, 1984 on ESPN. Third and six for Pittsburgh. Kajimi needs a big play. Kajimi being raised. Kajimi sacked down. He has taken down the 14-yard line, and it's going to be fourth down coming up for Pittsburgh, and Kajimi is having trouble getting up. Let's take a look. Remember, Kajemi got his chance when Cummings got hurt last year. Wanted to go deep to scales, but look at the pressure as the Cougars come in and do the job with Brad Smith, the dependable nose. Boy, do they need a good punt now. Our Kajemi is all right, but uh, the Cougars should get excellent field position, down only two. Well, Sikahama's waiting back around his 42-yard line. Here's Jellick's done a great job punting all day. Still seven minutes, 50 seconds to go in the game. Here's Jellick. Another good punt, but this is not as deep as some of them. And it's going to bound around, takes a Pittsburgh kick down inside the 40 and goes out of bounds at the 38. And here comes Bosco and his aerial circles back on the field for Brigham Young. He's had a great day throwing, and he certainly needed now. And if you need any more thrills than this, just stay tuned to ESPN, because at 7.30, it's Florida versus Miami at Tampa Stadium with Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. That's where the short man really has to fair catch that football. Meant the difference of about 15 yards. BYU starts at their 37-yard uh, line. 7.40 left. They're down two. There's the man that carries the hopes. Number six, Robbie Bosco of Brigham Young. His team's trailing by two. A field goal given the lead. There's a big rush. Fires it out here to the side, and there's caught. But hit down as Benson immediately hits down his man. So a short gain to Hamuli, the fullback. This Benson is a good football player. A little tradition in, uh, in heredity. Three brothers have played ball. He's a preseason All-American pick. And I'd say he's lived up to it today. It was not a short gain. It was a short loss. Three yards. Back to the 35. And a second down and 13. This man has been best scrambling to his left. That's when good things have happened for him. Let's see if they blitz on him. Nope, three-man rush. Now he drills it, and he's caught out here by Orr. Sideline pattern to the 44. He'll need about four yards for the first down. Keith Tinsley made this up. Bear in mind the Lee Johnson's field goal range, in practice, they say, runs up to 60 to 65 yards. And a field goal is what Brigham Young needs, but they're not there yet. They need a couple more first downs at least. Here comes Carter and Natalia back into the ballgame to put some pressure up. The crowd getting involved. This is a big, I guess every play's a big play in football, but uh, third and yeah. about five. And Kajemi may not be able to come back in. There they are at the sidelines looking him over. Here we go. Big third down. Biggest third down play of the game for Brigham Young so far. Bosco needs one here. Bosco. Bosco now. He's taken down for a loss. The big play by Dennis Satia. 
Adia, he had Haysburg going very deep, and Kozlowski over the middle, but the Pittsburgh defense comes through again. I'm not sure they're going to punt. Lavelle Edwards is still talking about it on the sideline. Let's take a look. Bosco, see, Bosco rather, sees an opening as the Panthers, for a moment, give him a lane. But here's Atiyah, the guy who just came in the ball game, and he makes the play once again. All right, here comes the punting team. They had a decision on the sideline with 6.23 left. Well, this will be a big possession coming up for Pittsburgh. They're leading by two points, 14-12. Brigham Young apparently is going to pump the ball away to them. They have Johnson in there with a foot off, shoe off on the left foot. Backing up now into... Took too much time, Jim. Here's a look at the foot, but uh, once again, it's five yards more for Johnson because uh, they do take too much time. Well, in there's Bill Wallace. They're going to use a sure-handed man back there to feel this punt. He does, he being Foles Fazio, is not going to take a chance of fumbling a punt. He has put Wallace, probably his best... Offense, fourth down. His best receiver back to handle this punt. Five-yard penalty. Doesn't mean a great deal to Johnson. Has tremendous range, but has not hit a great punt yet today. Last year, he averaged over 50 yards a punt. Johnson, and this one's hung up there pretty good. Fair catch by Wallace. Wallace takes it at the 20-yard line, so Pittsburgh looks at the clock. 5.44 to go with the score. Pittsburgh 14, Brigham Young 12. In the Chevrolet College Football Report. All the scores from around the nation as the 1984 season swinging underway here on this Saturday. Still more action to come to you on ESPN tonight. Florida versus Miami. There's the time remaining. 5.45 to go. Pittsburgh has been a grinded out type team and if they can do that here and run out the clock, they've got a two-point lead. Pitch it back here coming left this time is Bailey, the fullback to the weak side. He's up to the 25. They'll be halted right there. Gain on the play of four of second down and six and four is enough right now. They go on the weak side with a toss. We get a look at Frederick. Once again, they're right on schedule. Here they are with a little cross, and Frederick loves to get upfield and lead. There's one block, and he keeps going to try and get in the action. Once again, right on schedule. If you can pick up four crack, that gives you the first down after three tries. Second down coming up for Ken Jimmy. Jimmy's back in there after being shaken up a moment ago. Gives again to Bailey's fullback, and Beadle gets close to a first down. Stacked up on the 30-yard line. This is the Pittsburgh strategy right now. Keep the ball on the ground, keep it inbounds, run out the clock. Brigham Young has two timeout calls remaining in the game. They're trailing by two points. What a surge that time by Petty John, Christie, and Fralick. They just move them out and pick up the six, and they've got a first, 4.55 left. Well, you look back now at that two-point conversion that did not count and how importantly that looms right now toward the outcome of this game. Four minutes, 45 seconds to go, clock rolling. No one expecting Kajimi to go back the air. Look at the right, here he goes. Kajimi over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, that was off Casper's hands and in the air for a moment. And the hearts of about 40,000 Pitt fans came right up in their mouths. I'll tell you what, once again, Foge is a river gambler. People who say he's conservative, he throws the ball. It is a correct call. They have found a seam, and they got big yardage. They do not connect. The clock stops, 4.35 left. Second down and 10. Stopping the clock. Favors Brigham Young at this moment. They're trailing by two. 4.36 remaining. 4.35. There's the time. Top of your screen. They give the tailback skate. Steals gets outside and struggles over the 35. It's a pretty good game. Up to about the 37-yard line. Fralick again was the guy who sprung him loose. Boy, do they pick up the yardage on the ground. They run to that left side as well as anybody. Third and short. You've got to believe they'll go behind Fralick. Yeah, here's a big third and three right here, Irv. They've got to get the ball up to the 41. They've got about three and a half yards to be sure of getting a first down and keeping this drive going with four minutes remaining and a two-point lead. Plus a big, big play here for Pittsburgh. 
Throw back. Bailey's got it. He will not go. He is stacked up short of the 40-yard line. It'll be fourth down for Pittsburgh. And they're going to have to pump the ball away with just a two-point lead. Interesting call. They go to the right side. Instead of going behind Freilich, they go behind Dixon. Here comes the punting team. Jellick has been sensational today. Jellick comes in. Let's see if we can get a punting average here on Jellick. He has really kicked the ball well. Sikahima goes back to return. There's Jellick. A junior, and here's Sikahima, also a junior. Good job of snapping. Another great punt by Jellick. Sikahima has to back up. Takes it on the 11-yard line. Brigham Young is going to be way back in a hole. Sikahima struggles back to the 25, a pretty good return of about 14 yards. And so Brigham Young takes over. They need to get downfield for a field goal. They're trailing by two points. They've got a rugged Pittsburgh defense to contend with. And they have three minutes and five seconds. Well, we're proud to take part here in the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. And here's what's coming up on ESPN. Later tonight, Florida versus Miami, September 15th, Auburn at Texas, September 22nd, North Carolina, Boston College, September 29th, Navy at Arkansas, all on ESPN. Brigham Young, first down. Bosco will be putting it up. Here he goes. Bosco fires. He's got Kozlowski out here on the right side of the 30. Kozlowski sidelines. Out of bounds. Stops the clock on the 36. First down, I believe. About a 10-yard gain. Jim, I thought they had the flea flicker going. Keep in mind, BYU has come up with two trick plays. Let's take a look at Kaz. I really thought from his reaction that it was going to be the flea flicker. Instead, he runs out of bounds. Stops the clock with 2.55 left. But they have thrown the reverse pass. They've used the quarterback uh, coming in and throwing a halfback pass so uh, it's all on the line 255 left trying to start that drive it'll take him in they're going to measure here for a first down and uh, that gives the Brigham Young Brain Trust another few seconds here to get its offensive game plan uh, going over they'll come all the way over the sidelines for the ball went out of bounds it's very very close to it, it was a 10 yard pass play Bosco to Kozlowski you hate to be redundant, but Doman is sitting out with a sprained ankle. He has been the hitman, the big play guy up front for Pitt. Callahan turned this ball game around for the Panthers with that 79-yard interception for a touchdown. Right now, as it stands, that is the big play of the ball game because that's had he not been able to pick that ball up, Brigham Young appeared to be going in for a score, and they had all the momentum in the world. Quickly, Pittsburgh picked off another pass and scored again to go up 14 to three. Then Brigham Young. Reek uh, gathered and has come back in the ball game. They're trailing by two after a two-point conversion fail by Inches. Second here and just Inches to go for a first down for Brigham Young. Let's see if Bosco tries to do a little play action fake and go for something wrong. Or will he go for the first down? He's going for the first down. And up the middle, maybe more. Hey, Mooley! And he almost broke it. Hey, Mooley to the 43. Well, it's a first down for Brigham Young with two minutes and 51 seconds on the clock. Trevor Maddich has done it all day long. He had an excellent block. Take a look at the guy out of Sacramento, California. He was an excellent wrestler, and he just does his job. And Mooley, they're very high on him in Provo. They feel he can be a, an excellent running back getting tested today and coming through. You know, since this first quarter, this has been a different Brigham Young team. They have settled down here and played an excellent game. Two and a half minutes to go. Bosco being chased. Bosco running out of the pocket. Bosco picking up. Bosco goes down to 49. Taken down hard by John Carter again. And boy, this young freshman out of Louisiana is already making a place for himself in the line for Pittsburgh. Let's take a look. Once again, Bosco has run up the middle every time somebody loses their lane. He almost fumbles the ball here. Here's Carter, who's from the same hometown as the defensive line coach, Donald Thompson. That's a good job by Bosco hanging on because it is over if he drops it there. I got a feeling they're going to teach Bosco a different way to carry the ball. Less than two minutes to go now. Brigham Young still a couple of first downs away from field goal range even for Johnson. Bosco looking to the sideline. Bosco is going deep to Orr and it's going to be over his head out of bounds. Double coverage on Orr. They tried to fake Orr on a sideline pattern. I don't think Bosco saw the double coverage coming that time from Callahan. Well, Tinsley was sensational too. He was allowed the one hit. He's the guy who had the interception on the uh, tip play. Did a tremendous job. This is a guy who was on the indoor track team, all state in high school. Did a very good job because it was a little chair pattern, stop and go. Well, Brigham Young's got two plays here to try and pick up four yards. It's third down and four at the 49 yard line of Brigham Young. Bob 
Bosco. Bosco down the middle. Then he's got Haysbert down there. Haysbert's got it. He's going to score. A touchdown for Brigham Young. Bosco to Hayward explodes with a minute 37 seconds to go. And Brigham Young from Provo has come back to finally take the lead. What an exciting game to start it for ESPN. You talk about a great call, third and four. You're looking for a circle or swing. What do they give you? A post pattern. Haysbert, who's got the best speed among the wideouts, comes over, makes the play. Tinsley, the guy we're talking about, gambles, misses, and the Cougars now lead at 18 to 14. Sensational toss by Bosco. Unbelievable comeback by Brigham Young. They were down 14 to 3 in the third quarter. And once again, you give the credit. There's Bosco, he give, and you give the credit for the call. Third and four, you're looking for a swing, a circle. Uh-uh, that's not the case. They go for the whole ball of wax. Well, remember, it's not over yet. Pittsburgh's going to have over a minute and a half to go, and they got a passer of their own in John Conjimi. Well, you couldn't ask for more thrills than this, couldn't you? Pittsburgh ranked third in the nation this week in one national poll. Brigham Young, which has been relegated to the second ten of the polls, the preseason polls, after losing Steve Young, the $40 million arm. But the Cougars show they've come back with a solid team, and they certainly have believed in Lavelle Edwards, who told them they had a chance to win this game. The first time they've scored by the pass today, Irv. That's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And there's the guy who's very, very happy. He ran a great pattern. There wasn't any help. And there shouldn't be third and four. You're looking for the conventional vanilla call. And Edwards shakes him up here. Goes with the post. A Tinsley went for the interception to try and break it up. And Haysburg got the ball and then broke away from Tinsley. And then it was no contest. Haysburg probably the fastest man on the Brigham Young team. Excellent speed. Just raced into the end zone to score. 51-yard touchdown, and it's now 18-14, Brigham Young. They're going to go for two. Going to go for two, trying to get to the here. To Young, he's going to score. Young, ah, did he get over? Yes, he did. It is uh, Bosco. Bobby Bosco gets over for Brigham Young. To score the two points, it's Brigham Young 20 and Pitt 14. That means that Pitt has to score a touchdown and the extra point that'll win the game. Let's take a look, ground level. Bosco's had a sensational debut. Comes over here, a little uh, play fake. This is an option. You can either run it or throw it. The corner has to make a decision. Bosco's been very impressive running the football, and he's able to sneak in. So uh, the Cougars lead at 20 to 14. Oh boy, the drama, the excitement, it's been here. This is like a championship game, and coming up, we expect nothing less from Miami and Florida, from Tampa Stadium, Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire standing by, anxious to bring you that exciting game, and what an opening doubleheader we'll have for you here on ESPN for Football 1984. Jim, the strategy here now, if you kick the ball out of the end zone, the ball's on the 30, but I think you let Johnson go for it because it takes seven to beat you, not a field goal. I don't think you give them a run back. Their special teams are liable to score here. There's a look at uh, a guy that's just been very, very good here. You think he Aren't all the BYU good. quarterbacks good eventually? <laughs> are they not? What a line, and I think you can put Bosco right in line there to pick up, and he has grabbed the mantle here I'm from up. Steve Young, McCann, Wilson. Hi, Mom. Why don't they ever say hi to their father? Well, you know how moms are. Okay. Dads are going to be proud anyway. Let's see if Johnson tries to put it away. Here's Johnson. He kicks it high. It's going to carry down around the goal line. Right at the goal line. Here comes Hayward. Hayward can run with power, remember, and speed. Hayward tries to break a tackle at the 20 and goes down on the 23. The clock shows 1.33 to go. Here's how Brigham Young did it to take the lead. There is a story, the 75 yards, and of course they had the third and four call. And you think about it, you're thinking circle, you're thinking swing. Instead, it goes to Haysburg, and they get the chores done. So 133 left, and I got to believe that, uh, you know, people will pick on Wallace here. You'll double up on him and Casper. And Jimmy is not going to be able to come out, Irv. John Cummings is reporting out as the quarterback for Pittsburgh. Can Jimmy was shaken up, you remember, back earlier. And now they got Cummings in there. He was a starting quarterback a year ago, was hurt in the first game. That's when Kajimi took over. Now Kajimi's been hurt in the first game. Here comes Cummings. The pressure's on. Up the middle it goes. Top of the tight end Edmonds. He's at the 45-yard line. And Pittsburgh has got it rolling with a minute 28 to go. The Cougars were confused with their nickel defense, and Cummings picked on the right man. Once again, I like that tight end. Edmonds, he gives them the same threat. Cummings has really improved this year. He had a broken collar 
tailbone. Had to sit out a lot of last year in favor of Congeny. But here's Cummings now. He's put right on the spot. And there goes Brigham Young offsides. He's trying to say that Edmonds moved to draw him off. Now let's see if the officials are going to buy that. The offensive players are not allowed to move. This is going to be against Brigham Young. That'll take it up to midfield. And Contact. First spot. Defense. You know, the argument that you'll get on the nickel defense, to use it or not, the Cougars were very definitely confused in the secondary. Their pass defense has been very, very sufficient, just playing normal. And right now, BYU has got their normal defenders back in there. This guy Cummings is also a very strong runner, but right now you need the pass. You need the long play, and Pittsburgh has to score the touchdown to win. One minute, 20 seconds to go. Here's Cummings. Cummings going for the long. Downfield, and it is Wallace incomplete. Pass on the field's going to be called. And we've got a new rule issue. It's 15 right. yards. It'll be 15 yards. It'll not be at the spot down there. Well, there's a push-off down there. I don't know whether it was Sprouse or Allen. But it'll be a 15-yard penalty with a minute, 15 seconds to go. You know, I think these coaches may tell some players, look, if it means the game and you think he's going to catch it, go ahead, take a chance, because it's not going to be the spot of the foul on the Hail Mary anymore. Well, and uh, talking about the Hail Mary, BYU won the Holiday Bowl with a Hail Mary, Jim McMahon to Clay Brown. Let's listen now to James Garvey. Now, the previous spot's a 45. He's standing on the 50. Ah, uh, here he comes down. All right, let's take a look at Wallace, as he is such a possession-type receiver. The one you're going they to go to when it's sticky. They made a mistake. They put the ball in the 35. The line of scrimmage was the 45. Ball should have gone to the 30 and putting on the 35. That was a close call, wasn't it, I not see any contact. It is first down for Pittsburgh. I think the ball should be on the 30 because remember the five-yard penalty for offsides and put the ball in the 45. Cummings can reach the end zone easily here. It was here. a personal foul, not catchable. It's the same penalty, same penalty. First down. Now, he, there's Fazio. He's protesting the ball should be on the 30-yard line, not the 35. But they've moved the markers there. I think he's going to stand at the 35-yard line. 2014, Brigham Young, but Pittsburgh here, bidding to pull this one out of the fire. Here's Cummings. Cummings going into the end zone. Down is a Brigham Young player. And it's broken up. Incomplete. Good play by Jeff Sprouls. They're trying to go deep again to Wallace, the best receiver. You talk about good play. Wallace kept that uh, from being intercepted. Let's watch Wallace because Sprouls has excellent position, and Wallace keeps the ball away from Sprouls. This guy, I mentioned before, could have played basketball for Loyola. He's that good an athlete. Well, I tell you, you talk about drama in our first one, Jim. It's on the line. Can Jimmy has a bruise hip, and that's why he's not playing. Cummings very capable. John Cummings on the spot here. A minute eight seconds remaining. Pittsburgh needs to get in the end zone to win the game. Here's Cummings over the middle. Out of there. Broke it up. Great play by Kyle Morrell. There's the great athlete coming through for Brigham Young. They were going again to the tight end, Dexter Edmonds, over the middle. Pittsburgh wants a timeout, even though that incomplete pass stopped the clock. So they're going to use one of the three times out right here, the minute two to go. Let's take a look. Jim, once again, they're doubling the wide receivers. And Morrell, and I really this athlete on this ball club, comes up with the big play. Let's take a look at Cummings' reaction here. He's in there because of the bruised hip of Conjemi. There's a competitor. He thought he had it. Well, he threw the ball well. It was just a great play by Morrell, the senior from Bountiful, Utah. You know, his brother Guy played for Utah. It's quite a family. Right now, Ron Turner is up in the box, and he's talking to Cummings. you got to believe that you think about your tight end, Dexter Edmonds. They've had some success with scales coming out of the one-back set. This thing is far from over. BYU leads at 20-14, to 14, but this guy was the starting quarterback a year ago, and unfortunately he got hurt. And you see who's over there cheering up Cummings? John Jimmy. He's the cheerleader. And coming up later, Florida versus Miami, defending national champions from Tampa Stadium live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern daylight time tonight with Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. 102 remaining here in Pittsburgh. Oh, what a spot for Lavelle Edwards. Victory so close and yet so far. 
One of the things that really hurt them on this drive is they went in the nickel and they got confused. And that's why the good field position for the Panthers. They've been going to Wallace. Let's see if they go to Casper. Casper's on the run. Here's Cummins. Oh, he's over the middle and he's got Edmonds, the tight end. Short of a first down. He keeps him down. The clock rolling. 54 seconds. But they're down inside the 30-yard line now. It'll be about the 29. Pittsburgh again used one of its two remaining times out the call. 47 seconds to go. I'll tell you why, Jim. They did not have the play call for fourth down. They felt they'd pick up the first. They need something that's a possession cut here. They could not afford to take a chance, even though they use a valuable timeout. They can reach the end zone, but they need the four downs to do it. It's on the line. There's yep. another way to Who do you go to? Do you go to the tight end? Do you have Wallace with a little out? They're going to double Wallace. I can guarantee you that. Fourth and four. So Wallace and Edmonds, you think, will be the first two options. There's always Casper, who's faster than any of them. Good wide receiver. Bailey's a good receiver out of the backfield. So it's all up to Pittsburgh now. They come down to fourth down and four yards to go at the Brigham Young 29-yard line. BYU has come from the west and is billing to pull off another surprise here at the beginning season of 1984. And there's Lavelle Edwards. What a 12 years he's had at Provo. Three bowl wins he had last year, not just the Holiday Bowl victory over Missouri, but he won as the all-star coach in the Hula Bowl and then later in the Japan Bowl. He's had more years coaching, more victories, and the best winning percentage in the history of Brigham Young football. All right, here's the, this, it comes down to this one play. Fourth down for Pittsburgh, four yards to go. They're trailing by six. Here's Cummings. Cummings, Cummings, back. Cummings is going to be wrapped up, and Brigham Young will take over the ball with 40 seconds to go. Buried at the 30-yard line, could not find Dexter Edmonds. And I'll tell you why. It'll never show up in the box score, but 22, Allen, who had two interceptions, has been sensational, was all over the tight end, and that is the reason why they have to run. Take a look. Here's Cummings. He wants to go to the tight end, running a cross pattern, a simple cross. Go pick it up. No, because 22 is all over him. He must run, and the BYU defenders have made the tackle, and they're going to win this football game. You know, in summing up this game, Irv, we got 35 seconds to go, and of course, Brigham Young's got to avoid a uh, fumble. Here it is again. Look at Allen. But uh, Pittsburgh just not did not cash in when they dominated in the first quarter. Brigham Young settled down, got his passing game going. There's the drop on the ball by Bosco. Clock running. 32 seconds. It'll take one more snap, perhaps, to win this game. Pittsburgh used his final timeout with 30 seconds remaining. Pittsburgh then came on with a flurry with those interceptions that looked like it had Brigham Young on the ropes in the third quarter. They went ahead 14-13. But you got to admire the way the young men from Utah settled down in late the third quarter and then the fourth period, and Grizzly came back to win the ball game. Well, and once again, the call, third and four, everybody in the ballpark, us up here, are looking for a circle, a swing, the tight end, a hook, anything. Instead, they go for six. They throw a post pattern to Haysburg, and there was no safety help because the safety, correctly, is going to help out uh, up front. That's where the action is going to be. It was an excellent call. Now, for, that's Scott Robinson coming out here for Brigham Young. Now the gathering gloom along the Pittsburgh sidelines for Foge, Fazio, and the Panthers. I hope this year they were projected perhaps they win a national championship. Now they've got their work cut out for them. It'll be an uphill fight. There's a snap on the ball. That could be the final one. They can let it run out from here. 25 seconds to go. And Brigham Young now realizes it's got uh, his 12th victory in a row. They pulled even with Miami for the nation's longest winning streak, 12 straight. And there's the man who's picked up the mantle of the phenomenal Brigham Young quarterbacks. Robbie Bosco. Add his name to the Nielsens, the Wilsons, the McMahons, and the Youngs. Maybe a little early to say that, but certainly all signs point to it here. Two seconds, one second, that's it. All over. It's history. Brigham Young has come into Pittsburgh and upset the highly talented Panthers with a brilliant second half, engineered by Lavelle Edwards and Robbie Bosco. And there's a sad moment as quarterback John Congeny limps off the field for the Panthers, who looked like with that tumultuous third period that they had pulled out of victory, but it was not to be. There's a very happy coach, and his Foge Fazio disappointed. They got a lot of football left to be played. It's just a good football game in our opener, Jim. We'll be back. There's the final. Brigham Young 20 and Pittsburgh 14.